Yo. <clears throat> it's going on. What is up? What what is up this morning? The sky. Still? Gosh, man. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Hey, you'll flip. Flip around. Yo, God bless everybody. Hey, what's up, yo, yo, what up, y'all? Good you? morning, good morning. What's up? Hey, Flip. Flip, should I uh, should I send that GTR over to your direction, bro? <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, shoot it. I'll, I'll get a faster car than that. Watch. <laughs> Hey, the, the one thing he forgot to do is the turbo. You know when you oh, when dude. you do that noise and you go. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hey, there's a there's a guy. I, I I gotta find the video and I'll send it to you, dude. But there's a guy that does like eight cars and he and he does it to like the absolute perfection of how that car runs. Like it's amazing how he does it. I think he does. Oh, uh, he okay. does a. He does an RX-7, he does a Nissan uh, Skyline GTR, yeah. he does a, he does an Evo, um, what else does he do? But he does like the, 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 uh, the dude, the dude does it spot on. Thing? Is that the comedian that does the motorcycles also, that he says, that he, he says the motorcycle sound is is the same as their names and he does like the suzuki and he, it no, sounds no no like that's a different guy oh that, that that guy is hysterical with that it was like Honda. yeah that He's guy like, that guy that guy is suzuki <laughs> Kawasaki. <laughs> uh, but that's how Honda sound though. When the VTEC kicks in, like oh ah. for sure, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I used to have, I used to have uh, two S two thousands, man. Hunt, you you ever heard of the Honda S two thousand, right? The convertible one. Oh yeah, bro. Hey, the with the with the soup engines with Hector, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean the soup spoon engines? Yeah, I used to have two. Of those. Yeah, spoon engines. Sorry, spoon engines. Yeah, I, I had two of them. Dude, that's cool, the, bro. Yeah, the, the, the the cars I used to have, man. I used to have a Datsun 280Z. I had a 300ZX 1984 Turbo, uh, intercooled with the HKS blow off valve. I had the uh, S13 Nissan, S14 Nissan. I had a Honda AP2, 2005 and 2006. I had a Nissan Altima. I had a Nissan 200 SX. I'm a Nissan guy, man. I love Nissan. Uh, hey, that that's cool, bro. But I'll tell you what, the 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 one I'll, I'll tell you, man. Like the R the RX7, bro. That is such a cool car, bro. That Mazda yeah. RX7. And then the uh, Toyota Supra. Oh yeah, the suit I love. Car. Yeah, 
I test drove one, man. That thing is quick. That's I'll like the you. quickest single car. Yeah, dude. I'll, I'll tell you, man, like that, that first Fast and the Furious, man, they should have stopped after that movie. I mean, that very first one, that was the best one, bro. Like af- everything yeah, after that was just after. not good. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Paul Walker probably would have lived, too. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that that was as that first one was as close to actual street racing as as you get, and then they yeah. and then they started doing like all sorts of like you know stunts, God jumping changed. off things on the boats, and I'm like I'm like get out of here, man. <laughs> you don't think you like, could do that? If go you back to, to like stay stay in your. Well, yeah, but it's not as realistic as, like I said, the, that first Fast and the Furious, bro. Wait, do you really think you could do that, though? Yeah, you could, sure. With enough horsepower, yeah, like, absolutely. You, though. <laughs> you, though. You, 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 oh, bro, I could, yeah, I, could do, do, I could do that in my sleep, bro. I could do it in my sleep. <laughs> All right. You didn't. You didn't know I was. I was Vin Diesel's stuntman, dude. You didn't know that. <laughs> oh my! Hey, they, they should yeah, have just stuck to the uh, the first one, man. Like first one is strictly street racing, bro. Like that's yep. how we live out here where I live. Hey, ever since that movie, man, we'd be street racing all over the place, dude. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I remember that day. What's up, uh, Haji Shopee? Shopee? See, I, I, I'll tell you, I like my American muscle. I'm not much for, I'm not much for, uh, you know, uh, imports. I, you know, so I'll tell you what, man, you know, so you've, you've seen the second, you've seen the second, uh, Fast and the Furious, right? Too Fast, mm-hmm. Too Furious? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Every single Fast and the Furious, except the last one. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm tell you right now, man. If if that if that dude in the Camaro didn't wipe out, dude, it wouldn't that that Evo would it, they they would have lost, bro. American Muscle destroys everything, bro. It really does. Are you sure you got to do, that? yeah. You got to do so. Hey, listen, you got to do so much to a to an import, you know, to you know, uh, to to beat a to beat like an American Muscle vehicle. I mean, there's so much more you got to do to those. Hey, but those uh, Camaros and Cudas, you got to supercharge them if you want them fast, man. And you got to do the tuning. That's the thing a lot of people don't know if you're going to beef up a car. You got to tune the ECM first before you get all these bolt-on mods and all that, you know, for more horsepower, you know. Yeah, but if you take a, let's just say, let's just let's just take a, a, a 2000 uh, SS Camaro take a 2000 SS Camaro and then take a, you know, take a Honda Civic SI and put them next to each other. Just, just stock the way they are. Dude, you know who's going to win. Well, yeah, because the SI ain't turbocharged. Maybe if it was a Type R, maybe it'd have some, uh, you know, front well, end uh, okay. acceleration. So, but, uh, so yeah. flip, even if it, w- even if it was turbocharged, you know what I mean? It's still going to struggle. <laughs> Against that, against that yeah, SS, bro. Yeah, he's have to keep up. Yeah, like straight up, like off the line. Hey, but put that against a GTR, bro. Yeah, nothing beats a GTR. Zero to sixty in like three seconds, man. I mean, GTR is kind of its own model, though. Hey, but out here where I work, man, I test drove a, a Tesla, uh, a Plaid, dude. Hey, that thing is so quick. Zero to sixty in like two seconds, man. That thing is so fast. It's electric. Yeah, all electric for motor, man. Oh yeah, you know how we talk about cars is the same way y'all talk about sports and all that. Hey, it's amazing, man. But anyways, yeah, Jesus loves you guys, everybody. 
<laughs> nice segue, bud. Nice segue. <laughs> Yeah. What's up, buds? To those who are perishing, but to us who are saved, it is the power of God and the salvation. Corinthians one eighteen. What, what That's is? The verse of your what day. is? What is? What is? Flip. Yeah. Well, I think everyone's still making their uh Bustello, you know. So uh I'm chop not. it up. I'm not. No, mine's is already done. I'm actually gonna go and and fill the cup now. Twenty three thousand fell. Goodness. Goodness in one day. Big is getting breakfast. I want to uh, welcome. Uh, what, is, what is the question, uh, Lisa? You heard? CJ. What's up, Bill? Sorry. Uh, we got a, a sister that came in, uh, Rita Escobar. She was on Matrix Live last night and she wrote a nice uh, little study by uh, Jeremiah Johnson. And it was good. And let me tell you. Uh, Jordan was on fire with the Holy Ghost. Uh, if I talk about discipleship of, of what we've learned here on D scale, I was swore that it was trot in Jordan's body. <laughs> but we know it's the Holy Spirit. I mean, Jordan brought his uh, shovel and he dug stuff out. For, for a bunch of people on, on the, for other brothers and sisters on the live yesterday night it was amazing so just wanted to give a, a shout out and a, a welcome to uh, Rita Escobar guys anybody got the uh, clap um, what's it called sound effect <laughs> jury <clears throat> where's jury what is he doing Amen. Hey, all praises to the Most High, though, man, and Yeshua, man. That's yeah. amazing. Amen. Amen. Yo, right there, bro. Yo, I tell you, Flip, it was beautiful. Right. Yo, I I love uh uh when we see that man. When, when, uh, I'm trying to get him on now. I don't know if he's around. I think he might be working. I know he comes on a little later, right? Who? Jordan. Jordan is now officially Trot Junior. He or should senior. be. Should be on now. I'll see him now. What's what's his uh, username? My masterpiece, man. Yeah, yeah and, and, and flips right, yo. Trot Junior. You know he 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 he's so <laughs> good with with. With, with the voices, I bet he could do trot easily. Hey, that, uh, uh, now you know I forgot what I was going to say, my bad. <laughs> nice, Flip, nice. Bruh. Yo. Yo. So has anybody uh, looked at the uh, mountain, the Great Mountain? Ah. Said, has anyone looked at the Great Mountain? What are you here? The Great Mountain? And I got. He's coming. Yep. The Great Mountain. <laughs> 
Yeah, you're gonna have to ask me later because uh, I'm in motion right now and uh, you type kind of low. What? <clears throat> I said. <laughs> Has anybody studied the mountain or the great mountain or the mountains? Oh, uh, no, nah, not me. I'm still in Genesis. <laughs> Bruh, you gotta that, keep moving. <laughs> what do you mean, great mountains? Yeah, yeah still like, still like Trot, like Trot would say, well, uh, CJ, CJ, uh, what do you mean about the great mountain? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, um, Zechariah 4 7 asks a question Who are you, O oh great mountain? And and then the, and then the, and and Trot would say, "Well, read it, read I it." Just, I just did. You read one <laughs> verse. What does <laughs> Trot tell? <laughs> What's one <laughs> verse? Read the story. Read it. Read the black oh, letters oh. on the white page. <laughs> My goodness. Well, that's unfortunate. Um. Okay. Hold on. Hey Jesse, you there? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Jessica. Good, Jessica. Good morning. Hey, Dre. I'll, I'll, um, get, I'll talk, get her started. Dre, when you talked to Trot um, about our studies yesterday about, um, you know, controlling our uh, our, our behaviors pretty much, um, is he going to be downloading on YouTube? Because I have a husband I want to sh share all that with. Yes, he will be downloading everything on YouTube Up, uh, uploading. in the next couple of days. Beloved. Okay, I was looking, I was looking uploading. for it. Thank you, CJ, for the red pen. We really needed that comment right now. Appreciate yep. it. Um, hey, guys. Jessica, <laughs> are you there? <laughs> Jesse, wake up. Jesse, I'm going to drop you, Jesse. Are you there? Wow, wow. Read Jeremiah seven sixteen through nineteen. Oh, bro, Not right man. here online. I can't even. I can't read right now. I'm eating. No, I'm not telling you to read it on the live. I'm telling you just read it and then talk to me later about it. I want you to see. I want to see what you see. Jeremiah what? Seven. Jeremiah seven sixteen through nineteen. Six seven. Then, okay. Yeah, and then holler at me. You you gonna you gonna scream when you see it? I'll read All it. Right. In a Back second, I was just making me some toast down. Pan tostado con mantequilla. Yeah, that'd be nice. That's why I'm barely getting up. Búscate una, yeah, un, un canto de aguacate. No, no, mm. with the plancha, though. Not with the toaster the, the other way. Okay, seven, six, one. Wait a minute, say that again. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter seven. Verse 16 through 19. You don't have to read it on the live, though. Just read it and then no, we'll I talk know about that. it in a minute. I just want right. to write it down. Go ahead, CJ. You were talking about the mountains. I just wanted to talk to Jesse real quick. Dre, okay. you know we're all going to be looking at that scripture. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's on you, but uh, you still have to see it. Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. I'm going to see it later. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Gonna Jeremiah 7, 16. I already saw it. Uh, <laughs> okay. So. You said 16 through 19? Jeremiah 7, 16 through 19. Got it. Thank you. I was in the kitchen and my phone was in my, in my bedroom and all I heard from far away, Jesse, Jesse. Hey, Dre. Yo, yo. All hail the queen. <laughs> Husha. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what, dude? I was, I didn't, I didn't say much, bro. I was, I just got done watching Alice in Wonderland, man. That's why I was talking all hail the queen. Yeah, yeah. Alice in Wonderland. I agree 100%. Hey Jesse, um, that that video you sent me was really good with the new like side thing. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it was. It was really good. I um last night we went over on Random's live. We were just you know just sharing the the, the word, and we read again Philippians with um Trot read yesterday. 
powerful, man. It's just so powerful when you realize that um, it's the spirit of God that really dwells in you and does all his perfect will in our lives. It was so powerful. Then we moved on to um, 1 Corinthians, no, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where it also talks about the spirits. The gifts of the spirits, but we were not concentrating on the gifts. We were concentrating on the one. It, it just kept iterating. God is one spirit, even though there's different um, uh, gifts. But it, he kept, Paul kept saying, the way he wrote it, he kept emphasizing the one spirit, the one spirit. Because I think people misunderstand it. They think that, um, and then they think that when God gives you a gift, it's like, you know, you got this special gift and everybody else stays behind. But the way, you know, Paul writes it, if you really pay attention, how he makes it so clear, it is powerful. The same thing, like everybody say, oh, the fruits, the fruits, the fruit. It's only one fruit that we get. The gifts is all that. Yes, exactly. It's already lagging, bro. It's crazy. What y'all talking about? We were the talking about the God. Great Mountain. The Great Mountain. Not oh. just a mountain, but the great one. You better come back the and great you again because you didn't come in the way you're supposed to. Oh. The way I'm supposed to. Yeah. Well, you got you got rules and regulations set upon you. A yoke that is not manageable by any man has been placed over your shoulders. <laughs> I have I see that. See that. I need I need to look over the SOP. Uh huh. Or, or, or not. Just saying. Yeah, the TOP, the TikTok operating procedures. Yeah. Yeah, the TikTok, huh? You you know this protocol. (laughs) Your boy Zay's up here, man. He got a question for you. Zay. Zay, uh, Zay Guys, be saying, up? what's going on? My Zay, name is Zay, Zay be saying, but it's oh, okay. It's not Zay, it's Zay. <laughs> He's like, you know, there's an apostrophe. Yeah, it's Zay. If it was E, it would be Zay, but it's Zay. Zay? Yes, Zay. And um, it's good to see you guys. I was just asking, what, what actions can you do? Like, this is not like a trick question or anything. Like it's not. I was just wondering, like, what well, things that can let me you do? be the judge of that. Let me be the judge okay. of that. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, just a just a disclaimer. But what what actions get God's attention the most? I like a lot of people saying just faith. I I'm, I'm guys. I'm Christian. I have faith. But I mean, like, what actions, like in their daily life that we take, get God's attention, like the most? Would you say uh, it'd be something that please him right right so what, what does so the bible say wants, pleases yeah. god what is it what does the bible say uh pleases him what pleases god what does the faith. bible say pleases him so Are just you sure thinking that's about what it says? yeah without faith it's impossible to please god that's the only reference okay so if think. it's in so so if it's impossible <laughs> to please him without faith, impossible to do so, what other action could do that then? Impossible to be saved also without faith. I'm sorry. But I'm saying like just thinking about him, is that is that pleasing? That's pleasing enough? No, no. The, the question would be this. The question would be this, right? If it's impossible to please him without faith, if it's impossible to please him, then what else is going to cause him to look at you? If you can't please him by doing anything other than faith, I need you to show me what else is causing him 
j- just just for argument's sake, to take his attention off of whatever he's doing to look at you? What else could cause him to look at you if it's impossible to please him without faith? So if you don't have faith, then you cannot please him because it's impossible. So what other action other than faith could cause someone to get God's attention off of whatever it is he's doing to like look at you for him to smile? What causes God to smile? Obviously the thing question, that, that's a better question than I ask, honestly. Yeah. So, so what causes him to smile is the thing that you do that is pleasing to him. And there's only one thing that pleases him. What's the well, one that's thing a that bit, pleases that's him? A bit, that's a bit picky. I'm not saying that, like, as I don't understand, because I am someone who has faith, but I honestly believe that he was pleased by a lot of things. I thought he is not a person who was like that. Um, yeah, 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 he is. He, there's only one thing that pleases him. Do you know what that is? Oh, yeah, I do. Himself. What? What is it? Huh? Him. Himself. Himself. Yeah, but there's got to be a scripture that tells us that, right? At least one. What do you think? Um, I don't think it's up for me to decide. I was just saying, like, I think he really is, like, his own. If it's only one thing, no, it no. would be him. So, no, I know, I know. What I'm saying is, what verse would say that? Anybody? Does anybody know what verse would say that it's him? Yep. In pleases- John. Amen. Yep. When Jesus is being baptized, yeah. the yep. of God Jesus says, being... this is my son in whom I, I am well pleased. Right. And this is my begotten son in whom I am well pleased. God is not, when you read the whole Bible, the only thing that pleases him is Jesus. And Jesus is faith. Because Jesus is your servant. So there's no action that a human can do outside of faith that pleases God. There is no action. Things that get his attention that humans do that have nothing to do with faith. You're moving the totem post now. (laughs) Can you show me where that is? (laughs) Well, Sodom and Gomorrah... I would say that would be a good example that I could think of. What do you mean? Well, they got God's attention. I didn't say it was good attention, but humans do get his attention for things that they do. Right. So in the... But they didn't get his attention. They got his wrath. So uh... I feel like because everyone has a point that they become saved and have salvation, like you're not born with it, that everyone has had that attention from God as well. What do you What do you mean, had their attention? Like his displeasure as well as now being in faith. Like that would be a good motivator as well. Like you don't want to displease him and you've, you have before, so you don't want to do it. I would say that's oh, it's so not it's not so really so okay. So now we're talking about we're talking about displeasure now, not just pleasing him, but now the displeasure, right? Oh, yeah. So, so I guess the question would be, um, let me see. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of going to, and and it could it could lead to did God create evil? That would kind of that that would be where like where that would be leading, right? Like well, if no, you continue I don't have that to, I really don't have that belief. That's far well, from. I'm I'm saying, I'm saying that 
the type of the kind of talk that we're doing right now is more philosophy, right? It's not really based on, um, that could be right. It's yeah. not, yeah, it, it's more philosophy, a uh, uh, philosophy, right? And the Bible tells us to be careful with all these philosophies where we just sit around and just careful. Just, it says, just, beware, beware. That's that has the beware sign, people. About yeah, so Colossians two. I don't want to like. Well, I mean, no, no, but I'm saying that that's where we'll be going, right? We'll be going to. Uh, well, did God create evil? And and now you have to ask. Okay, well then, what is evil? And it, it's very simple, you know what what evil is. Um, you know, evil is is. Uh, you know, we we can call it hell, right? That's what evil is. Evil is hell. You can call it that. You really can because, because evil, hell, sin, those things are on one side. If you were like to split it, right? Evil, hell, sin. We can use all the words we want, but there's God and then there's not God. So when people ask, you know, did he create evil? It's like, okay, well... <laughs> Just by God alone existing, the the understanding or idea of evil is real. Just by him existing alone, period. Because he he it, he is the infamous wisdom. So it's like if if somebody was to say, Well, uh, but if God is good and that's all that there is. And what they're what they're missing is that's that's not all that there is. God is wisdom. There is no such thing as a greater wisdom than Him. So because He knows what He is, evil is real. Because anything opposite of Him is evil. So the idea, just the arguments that people get into with this, you know, just like you know, there is heat and and cold, and then people will say, well, there's really no such thing as as uh as cold uh it's really there's heat and if you're not uh close enough to heat then you can't be hot therefore cold isn't really real and you're getting these philosophies right but uh you know the absence of heat is cold like like the absence of god is evil therefore sin is evil right but but the but the philosophy part of it where you're you know, where a person is arguing about it, it's, it's, uh, it really, it's, uh, it's, it's pointless because that's what hell is separation from God, separation from the light, if you want to call that the heat, that is coldness and darkness and hell and evil. So, just one example of that, and I use this one all the time, is, is, uh, Jonah before he gets swallowed by the big fish, it says that he leaves Joppa, and Joppa, that word means beautiful. So the presence of God is pleasant and beautiful and delightful. That's the presence of God. And he exited out of that presence, gets swallowed by the big fish. Now he's in his belly. There's a whole point of this being in the belly of a fish. But he, he gets swallowed by this big fish, and from that place, he called that place hell, and he calls out to the Lord and gets brought back to the presence uh, of the Lord. So hell is not being in the presence of God. That is an evil place. So did God create evil? <laughs> if you want to say he created it, you you know not you uh zai but if person wants to say um that god created evil then fine you a person can say that because by law just existing evil is real period and uh people have arguments no 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 well all right fine then cold's not real either if if evil is uh uh, if evil was created, then fine. Then cold was created, right? Because if there's a fire, you're, there's no, there's cold isn't there. It's only there because 
there's no presence of fire. That's why cold is is there. You know, the the earth has vegetation. You know, like the the regular dirt. You know, the desert doesn't have hardly any vegetation. There's nothing there to hold the heat. So the sun hits the desert. It's hot, very hot. But when the sun leaves, the heat leaves because there's no vegetation to hold the heat. It's just sand. It gets cold very quickly. You know, but... Trout, let me ask they, you a question. Yeah. Just to go along with what you're saying, would, would it be fair, would it be accurate, I guess, to say that God created a place for the fallen angels and that place wasn't meant for us, uh, but... You know, when we choose not to be, you know, with God, we, we basically make our choice to go there. It's not necessarily that like God created evil, but God created a place for, you know, the fallen angels, you know, and, and we choose essentially to to go there when we don't choose God. Is that Would that be accurate? Yeah, and it, well, I mean, it, well, again, you know, the Bible tells us that, you know, who, who quote unquote hell was made for. But but again, um, you know, we we're using the word made and, you know, you know, even God in a couple of places, how he talks about he made everything, you know. Um, but when you're looking at what that is like, the choice is what he made. And I, I, I don't like really get, getting into it, but I'll, I'll talk about it for a minute, just like I already have been. That, that uh, makes sense. That makes sense, the, though. That makes sense, though, Trot. Sorry, not to interrupt well, you finish. again, but, but yeah, oh, no, you're you're fine. No, you're fine. It's just it's just that God uh, gave Adam and Eve a choice. So by the choice alone, He made whatever anybody wants to claim that He made. Then fine, we can you know instead of playing, you know, uh, a a acrobats, you know, instead of playing, you know, circus for five hours, look, you know. He made the choice. He didn't have to make a choice. He could have just made robots, and then therefore, there in, in people's terms, there would be no evil. Even though, even though evil is still a thing because of God's existence, the opposite of him is evil. The opposite of him is the darkness, because he's the light. So, uh, you know, um, so you so fine, you know. If people want to say, yeah, he created evil, fine, 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 <laughs> you know, but I just think there's a huge part being misunderstood that is creating the evil. It's about the choice being made that is uh, opposite of him. That is what he created. And so, um, you know, what gets God's attention? Well, the truth is they both do. Because obviously he's not blind. He can either tell if you're with him or not. Jesus said they're either with me or they're not with me. <laughs> they're either in the light or they're in the dark. They're either righteous or they're not. They're either hot or they're cold. I mean, you know, but God made the choice for that. So because he made the choice, then fine. You know, you can say he made... You know, evil, you know, he's either seeing his son, which is pleasing to him, because remember, at the end of the day, there's going to there's two women in the Bible. He sees the bride. Right. Because, you know, Zai is saying what gets his attention. Well, the what gets his attention is the choice that you make. That's what gets his attention. You know, I was focused on what pleases him, but. If you want to split hairs, what gets his attention is whoever is standing in front of him, he either notices Christ or he doesn't notice Christ. So both choices get his attention, you know, because it's like you either chose. The, it's like, I have a quick chat. It's like when he told the yeah. disciples and the Pharisees, your, your God is, he said, you're, you're the, your God, um, your children of, um, I don't know how exactly how he worded it, but he said that their father was the devil. He said that their God wasn't God. It was the devil. 
you know, which verse I'm talking yeah. about, where he told them, it's just like that. It's just, I mean, you make a choice. You, you choose to serve God or you choose to serve the devil because either God is your father or Satan is your father. You can't have both. Unfortunately. Who would, who would not want, I, I feel like, I feel like they're not in comparison to me. So like, maybe this is for like some people who are new or who don't know much about God. I personally think if I had the choice, I would have chosen at birth. But I feel like many of you who are deep in faith would agree. Like you would have started off walking out of the womb as a Christian, as a child of God, right? But the choice is really something that he is sovereign over, that he set up as well. It's something that he chose from a long time ago. I don't think I don't think I performed any action at some point that got his attention enough to say, you deserve salvation and you know, these other people around you don't, and you have like, to like, with them. like, not even a, like, not even a choice. Like you didn't choose. I think there was a genuine. I think there was a genuine, but I think that is just because I came across him, and I don't know. There's no, there's nothing in me I could think that just made the right decision. I think it was him who did so it. You said something. You said that you didn't, um, you didn't, so you didn't do anything. What was it that you said? You just said it. Before I knew him, I don't think I did anything that could have got his attention to say, like, you deserve salvation and to be with You don't my deserve own. that salvation. There's no, you could have jumped up and down and do cartwheels. And, and you, 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 none of us do. We, this is something given to us by, it's totally given to us by love, pure love, because we all deserve condemnation. We, not one of us deserve his, 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 redemption i mean if it came to us earning it or thinking that there's something about us that can actually you know um create you know a star or no a star is born no right. but it makes Not it look like us. god is like setting up this arena you know in that description like he i don't i i personally don't think he's like eyeing down like that decision like it really gratifies him in some way i think I think there's grief. What do you mean? Too. What do you mean, Zai? Because, you're you're kind of being vague. What do you, what are yeah. you trying to say? Because I'm thinking exactly? like I'm thinking about like like God doing it. You know, like His what, choices. What do you mean like, doing what? Like God, like God doing what exactly? So I said, you know, what would get His attention? What would please Him? And then we we kind of brought it in and focused in on this point, pretty much the point of salvation, the point of faith, and that 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 matters and it gets His attention the most. Like when someone just chooses Him, at that I feel like. It just gave me like a picture in my mind that maybe you didn't mean to convey. I just, I think, you know, maybe he's that present on people deciding to choose him, but I don't think that anyone has that power to just wake up one day and say, oh, I think Jesus Christ is, you know, the truth. I'm going to just. So the, so, the so the Bible, so the Bible said, so the Bible said that, um, that he gave, um, us dominion over the earth right that's what he gave us he gave us dominion so when you say he didn't give us the power to choose uh, are you are i mean I, i'm just saying i think i think that that is, you know it's bringing maybe more to my, uh, my awareness than i thought if you're telling me like that there is something there that i didn't see before yeah so when the when when, when god says i set life and death life is he telling you to make a choice or not yeah. yeah so the only part you play is that choice that's it but to say he okay that's a good way a to choice, say it. i do like i do yeah. like yeah that's good. yeah so so t yeah so to say that he didn't give us a choice not you but anybody that would actually say that uh you know that's that would not be true at all and so when people say uh no to that that's there's my more than that was my ignorance. Well, because again, I don't again, know there, the function there, that he's using. Yeah, but there are, but there are people that will say, "No, we don't have a choice." There are people that say that, and uh, uh, <laughs> I again, I, you know, I didn't mean to 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 do that. I just good, was you're good. I, I, but yeah, but again, we're all in this together, right? You're not alone. You're 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 not up here like excluded. Like you're literally connected to all the other squares up here. You know, so it's no. You know, I, I'm not looking at it that way. I'm just, 
uh, saying that there are, though, there are people that they will 100% say that they had no choice. Even though the Bible says, I set before you life and death, choose life. <laughs> That's the words he's saying. Choose. You choose. Yeah. And then it also it says, also choose you this day who you serve. Do what? It's I said it can also be weakness, like somebody who's not mentally strong could probably perceive that, like, you know, they don't think that they yeah. could, you know. Okay, so that, but that's that. where God's sovereignty comes in, you know, don't you know God's sovereignty? God knows, God knows who's able to choose and who's not. He knows, right? So, yeah, see, that's, you know, that's not, really what my mind went to, like, yeah, and that's, and that's, that he used. Yeah, sovereignty is the function, but sovereignty doesn't take away man's choice. It doesn't take it away. You still have to choose. So even though right. God and so knows all just, things. That one who was from sovereignty and is questioning things, because I'm noticing like how it actually works, is just not how I thought. So I am coming from that side. I would say that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't have those responsibilities that God gave us as people who have a will you know yeah yeah but again uh you know choose you this day who you will serve choose you know that word choice is there a, a, a lot more than people give credit you know it's just you know people they, they look at god they're in awe you know like god this awesome thing you know and uh, so when you say, yeah, but you still have to choose, and they're like, no, you don't understand. You know, God's got the Triton. He's the God, you know, and it's like, well, we're all in agreement with that. Um, but God told Adam not to eat from the tree. <laughs> so where was the sovereign, where was this, where was the sovereignty of God? And, and, and as far as the way that they are claiming, there's this type of sovereignty that they're claiming is exist. Where was it then? And they're like, oh, God allowed it. Really? That's it was in their did, the nature, though. Eat. They also were given, they, they were given huh? dominion and the nature that, that, you know, we haven't even, like, fully experienced, I would say. Well, again, they, I'll tell you one thing. i tell you one thing we have fully experienced is choice. That's one thing that's not different, never has been different. They had a choice. We have a choice. So that part right there is not different. You know, uh, Adam and Eve were not robots and nor are, are we, you know. So the, again, that's why even in the Bible, it says choose just like God has said to them, don't eat from that tree. They had a choice. They could have. <laughs> that's why he told them not to. <laughs> Yeah, you're definitely you know, talking so. about something a lot deeper than what what I initially was questioning because for me to now even think about you said the presence earlier. And, you know, and so you're talking about it's the type of choice where that presence isn't influencing the person's choices. And I feel like I have not experienced that. Like that presence does influence my choices. So maybe you are talking about something that I have not heard of or yeah, well, the question that you ask, uh, it that's what it's going to lead to, you know. And and I know you don't, you don't maybe not, you don't see it as, uh, a, 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 like, a philosophy, but that's really what. Hold on a second. You got my attention with that, with with the way hey. to the discussion. So, you there, Dre? Yeah. What? What happened? <laughs> Eric of Texas. Eric of Texas says, "Choose to remain in God's presence." <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's like that's that's what wow. It gives me a wow factor that there is even that even exists that someone can even be in the presence and not be influenced by it in that way, um, in a righteous way. So that is a bit yeah. terrifying. It's a thing I didn't know existed. Yeah, but that's why God said, fear not, right? <laughs> As you, you'd be tempted to be, you know, scared, terrified, or, or whatnot. But then God puts the comfort there and says, fear not. So we don't live in fear, right? God, and then the Bible yeah. says, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love and power and a sound mind. 
That's what he gave us when we became saved. So once a person is saved, the only area that fear would come from is from the cold area, is from the vain area, from the evil area. That's where fear, because in the light, there is no fear. In the light, there is not, the, darkness is not in the light. Darkness is the, is the absence of light, just like cold is the, is, is, is the absence of heat, just like evil is the absence of good, right? So when people say, well, did God create evil? Well, then all those other things God had to create. He had to create dark because the choice was given. As soon as that choice was given, that's how it was created. Not as though it was right. created, but it was it's it's understood and known. But when you go to the beginning when he made Adam and Eve, he did not create them with good and evil. That's what's funny about the whole thing is he did not create them with that understanding. They didn't understand good and evil. They didn't understand that. They understood life. That's what they understood, life. And it was Satan that, quote, unquote, gave them the understanding, if you want to call it that. He gave them the understanding of good and evil. But he, God did not create Adam and Eve with good and evil. After Adam and Eve were created, they were perfect. <laughs> which means God created them exactly how he wanted them to be created. Perfect without the knowledge of good and evil. So when people say, Oh, well, you know, God is sovereign and he allowed them. To, <laughs> he allowed them to eat from the tree. He didn't allow them. They had dominion and that that's where people are falling short. They don't understand that when God gave Adam and Eve his, uh, you know, when he gave them dominion, it took his dominion away. That's what it did. That's how perfect he is. And he I gave have, them. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. No, what were you saying? Um, I was going to say I had a question because, you know, I didn't even really think think about this, but he did, he did step in when Abraham was making decisions that, you know, well, right now, though, you, you have to, you know, if we start bringing up everybody, it'll cause confusion. I'm saying when it comes to Adam and Eve, when it comes to Adam and Eve, right, uh, he gave Adam dominion, right? So yeah. you're, saying, you're saying he stepped in with Abraham. Uh, Abraham didn't have the dominion that was given to Adam. True. Because Adam had fell, and Abraham is a child of the fallen Adam, not the perfect Adam. Right? So yeah, uh, God made Adam in his image and his likeness. But when Adam had kids, he was at a fallen state. So all those kids, they didn't have the image and likeness of God. They had the image and likeness of fallen man. So... Nobody was created in the image and likeness of God except for Adam. It, we became the image and likeness of God when we became saved, right? That's why we were born again, because the first part of us was born from Adam, the first Adam. The second, born, the born again part of us was born from the last Adam. Now, because of Jesus being the image of the invisible God. Now we are the image and likeness of God. Now, not before. <laughs> but with all that being said, Zai, I feel like it's been a minute since you've been up here, dude. Yeah, I haven't been up here anyway. because... Yeah, I haven't been up here because I've been just doing a lot of studying and different things, but I have been in the comments, so even though yeah, you didn't Yeah, okay, cool. 
Oh, cool. Sweetness. All right. Uh, TJ brought something up earlier this morning. Yeah, what's that? TJ, wake up. I'm awake, I'm awake. It was the Great Mountains in Zechariah 4. He asks uh, in verse 7, Who art thou, O great mountain? Okay, but that's, what about that's it? As, that's as far as we got. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Still not very far. <laughs> I was going to read the verses around it because Bill asked me to, but if we have something else on the agenda. Yeah, we're going to we're going to finish up harnessing, uh, harnessing your emotions. Yeah. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, it really shouldn't take. It really shouldn't take 30 minutes, maybe 40. Uh, we talked about it a lot already, um, but I want to finish that up. We just, uh, we just, we just hopped on the Zy train for a little bit because he ain't been here in like seven years. Yep. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, <laughs> so I've we kind of spoken. No, no, I know. I'm just, I'm just being facetious. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> I guess I mean up on the panel is what I mean. Um, so I think we left off. Uh, I'm like thinking. Oh, I was talking about um, how every human you know, they, every human wants to enjoy a, uh, pity party. A everybody does the temptation to have a pity party to kind of like, you know, cause you don't want anyone around, right? Yeah. When you get in this, like really is, it's, it's just this weird attitude of like, just, you could call it whatever you want, feeling sorry for yourself, you know, you can call it whatever you want, man. But most people know what a pity party is and I don't care if it lasts for 30 minutes, an hour, three days, the behavior comes from the same root. No Satan matter what just, he, um, I tried, I found that, um, when, um, people who deal with depression, really bad depression, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about, Oh, I got upset or something happened. I'm a little, you know, a little down. No, I'm talking about people who struggle, literally struggle with depression. Um, you'll find that um, when they look at themselves in the mirror and allow the word of God to transform their mind, literally how um, Paul says, the renewing, the word will renew your mind. And when a person that's going through that deep struggle, because what that is, is the enemy. The enemy is just putting you, he's allowing you to, to, to you're allowing him. <clears throat> because you open up your mind, he's coming in with all these thoughts and all these words and all this nonsense. And it, woe is me, is what's happening, woe is me. But when you, you know, we were talking about this yesterday in Philippians 4, 8, whatsoever things is true. He says, you know, think on these things, whatsoever things is true, what's true? Jesus is true, his word is truth, his love is true. Whatsoever thing is pure, what is pure? He, Jesus is pure. Jesus loved me so much that he, he redeemed me with his pureness. When you start to take those words that God has given us in his scripture, which is Christ Jesus, because Jesus is faith as we know this, and you start allowing these words, which is Christ Jesus, to renew your mind, I'm telling you, those chains will be broken. That pity party won't take place anymore because there's no room for that pity party. There is no would it, uh, I have a question because I was actually really good advice. Um, I was wondering, like, what would you, what advice would you give somebody who has like a trouble feeling things, like if they don't feel at all sometimes, really, 
Not necessarily. What do you mean? Depression. What What do you mean I would exactly? Say, I would say like concern. I like a focused concern for just certain things. And um, some things I always have concern for and a lot of things I'm just pretty, I'm pretty like, I think I'm a bit too laid back when it comes to the emotion side. And people think that if I talk to them or if I have deep conversations or anything, questions, they think that there's depression or something, or they just want to help in some way. That would be my, like, if I was going to expose myself and say, like, what I struggle with, I do struggle with, like, you know, hanging on to, like, deeper concerns, having concern. You know, I'm very laid back. I don't kind of like, there's probably something wrong with how apathetic I can approach life. So, Give me an example. Give me an example of what you mean. Um, like... Well, I don't have children, so I don't have anything to be like super deep, deep connected concern to. I feel like, you know, really when it only comes to like safety, driving a car or something is when I have like super strong emotions. I don't have um, like I get overstimulated very easily. So my natural state is like kind of ap- it feels very apathetic, not a lot of feelings going on. So. I don't really well, I t- I, I, yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, yeah, I see what you're trying to say. Like you, you can't you can't narrow it down. That's fine. This is what we'll do. Look, we're talking about harnessing emotions anyway. Yeah. So. So, yeah. So just yeah, just chill, man. Just sit back, chill. Let me finish out this whole thing because I'm probably going to answer uh, what you're asking probably about 50 times before I'm done. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So uh, and if I'm not, then you can say I don't feel like you answered my question at all. And gotcha. I'm going to go back and then I'm going to go back and show you how I actually did. So, so let's just let, let me finish this out real quick because I promise if anybody is having a problem harnessing their emotions, um, I cover it when I talk about this. Okay. Now what it is, is people are not understanding probably w- what I'm saying and that's fine. Um, because you know you can get someone to understand something if they if they really want to. So, um, but you know, talking about pity parties, right? Uh, you know, the point I'm bringing that up is because all people want to have them. They want to, uh, uh, you know, curl up in a ball and and like just just 100% be in their flesh. Now, remember, you know, uh, I talked about spirit, soul, and body for a couple of days before. We talked about harnessing your emotions and the emotions that I'm talking about is the emotions that are in your body. So again, we talked about spirit, soul, and body because we're looking at what part of you is perfect, what part of you became saved, what part of you became uh, new, right? All things are old. Behold, all things have become new. It's talking about your spirit. That's what became 110% new, not your flesh. Your flesh did not become 110% new. So when people are trying to, uh, they're like, well, I still see and something's wrong. Okay. So that most of the time, the person's not understanding that in your spirit, you don't sin. And that, and, and that spirit is you now. That's another thing people are not understanding. We are a three part being. I know it's not easy to understand. How can I be three parts? I understand the question. I get it. But we are. We are a three part being. And our body is not lined up with our uh, spirit right now. Okay. Because of the first atom. This body, one, it has its own will, it has its own uh, desires. And our job while we're here is trying to figure out each part of us and what role it plays. And when you can figure out what role each part of you plays, a lot of the questions that you think you have, you actually no longer have because you're understanding each role. And so we talked about what each part of you was. Uh, We made it very clear that the soul is the decision maker between the flesh and the spirit because the soul is the real you. Your spirit is what makes you, the soul, righteous. Your spirit is what's making you righteous, not your flesh. Your spirit, you have been, when I say you, I'm talking about your soul. That's the real 
you, your soul. Your soul is where your spirit is. If you didn't have a soul and you were just your flesh, if the spirit of God entered your flesh, which we know is not glorified, our flesh, our body is not glorified. And if the spirit of God entered that, you would die. <laughs> that, that's what would happen. You would die. But your soul of the corruptible. Body. Yes. Yes. Because your body is considered dead. You're, in God's eyes, your body is dead, period, the end. So when people are having this struggle that they're like, well, I still sin or I'm still doing these bad things. The problem is you think that your body is you. That's the problem. You think that your physical body is the real you. And I'll be honest, if I was to believe which I do not at all. But if I was to believe that, I'd be scared every day too. <laughs> there's no there's no hope for the body. I'm saying with that mindset, <laughs> there's no hope because, because I'm bad. I'm doing these things because in your head, I is the flesh. Anytime this, this type of person says, well, I, they're talking about their flesh. You know why? Because they don't understand that their real I is the soul inside the body. And then to take it further, your soul has a spirit and that spirit is perfect. It's the spirit of Christ. The same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead resides in you. Talking about your soul. I'm going to say that's a pretty awesome spirit. So if I got the same spirit living in me that resurrected Jesus, how do I keep, how is it so easy for my eyes to come up, to come off of what that is back to the flesh? Because like we've already discussed, evil is the opposite of God. It's the, it's not being in the presence of God. And every time you say I, and you're talking about your flesh, you're in hell. You're still in hell. And you don't even see it because your flesh and your spirit are not it. They're not a friends. They're enmity. The Bible makes it clear that the flesh and the spirit are enmity. It literally means hostile. They don't communicate. Your flesh and your spirit do not communicate. Your flesh communicates with your soul, the real you, and the spirit communicates with the soul. That's why it says you choose. You can choose to listen to the flesh. And when I say you, I'm talking about your soul. Your soul can listen to what the flesh wants to do, or it can listen to what the spirit wants to do. It's your choice. Every time that your soul listens to your flesh, flesh, you left Joppa. You're just like Jonah. You're leaving the presence of God. That is hell. That is darkness. That is the absence of light. Two will always outnumber one. If your soul comes into agreement with your flesh, then the spirit is outnumbered, my friend. If the soul comes into agreement with the spirit, then the flesh is outnumbered. So, you know, but this is all coming from talking about spirit, soul, and body, and then now getting into harnessing your emotions, where and the emotions that I'm talking about harnessing is the emotions in your flesh, where the Bible says there is no good thing. <laughs> That's what it says, that in your flesh, or like Paul says, that is in my flesh, he says, there is no good thing. So when people say, no, there is a good thing. No, no, there's not. Your flesh is dead to God. So can you imagine someone trying to use their flesh to be good? They put themselves under the first covenant, the law of Moses, and they're using their flesh who there is no good thing, but these people are saying they're going to create a good thing by being good. You don't understand that thing is dead to God, man. 
So the idea that your flesh has to be good, Christ did not come to make your flesh good. He came to make you good. The soul, the flesh is not you. The soul is you, and he came to make that good. And he spirit, his quickening spirit, his uh, uh, spirit that's alive, because before you had a dead spirit. That's what was wrong with you. It wasn't your flesh. Don't you understand? The spirit that lived in your soul was dead, and you were sin. You weren't sin because of your flesh. Are you kidding me? You are sinful because of your spirit. That is the sin that Paul talks about in the book of Romans. 39 times about sin. All the derivatives, they're all there. 39 times. And out of the 39, only one is he referring to your flesh sinning. Only one time. The other times that Paul talks about sin in the book of Romans, he's talking about your spirit. It's a noun. It's not a verb. Only one of them is a verb. All the rest of them are nouns, person, place, or a thing. It's not talking about sin as an action, like you stealing and killing and and doing bad in your flesh. That's not what Paul is talking about. He's talking about your spirit. That's That's how you are a sinner. That's how. Period, the end, right? The gift that was given to us from the first Adam. Is that why he keeps Adam calling gave it us a, nature? And he uses the word nature so he much? He keeps calling what? Like why he uses the word nature? Well, he, he, well, yeah, he's always trying to... He, he wants people to see. He's trying to show people that you need to sep, You need to be able to see what part of you is righteous, what part of you is, is an issue, what, what part of you... He's trying to get everyone to see, but you have to use all of his inspiring letters in order to understand. And and there's, a, for whatever reason, man, people try to compartmentalize Paul's letters. He does not contradict himself. You add all of his letters together and you will see spirit, soul, and body, man. You'll see it. A hundred percent. That was his, you can just tell, like that was a huge part of what he was trying to do is to get everyone to see that you are a three-part being, a spirit, soul, and a body. In your spirit is where you have been perfected. Your spirit is now alive, and your soul has a choice. And that he's constantly going over these facts over and over. Uh, you know, and, and, and with all that being said, all of us in our flesh, okay, has emotions that are irrational. They're not from God. Emotions of fear, emotions of suffering, all these things, because your flesh is the separation. And let me let me put it this way. Look, your flesh is Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't you understand? Don't, don't you understand? Your flesh is Sodom and Gomorrah, man. Your flesh is the part that is separated from God, the part that's not the holy nation. Your flesh is the other nation. It is complete enmity. Stop stop making a mistake and and steadily trying to see your flesh as what God loves. I'm telling you, God does not love your flesh. Because if God loved your flesh, then God hates it at the same time. Because it's enmity. You need to focus on what you are and what is making you what you are. You are a child of God, not your flesh. Your flesh is the firstborn, my friend. The Bible says the first will become last and the last shall become first. The last Adam becomes the first Adam. Not the first Adam. The last Adam became the firstborn. Just like Jacob and Esau. Jacob was born last, but he received the inheritance, just like Jesus received the inheritance, just like your flesh was born into this world first, but your spirit is the second born of you. It receives the inheritance. Joseph's sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, 
the second born receive the inheritance, not the first born. These things are told to us in the in the Old Testament. And the problem is the only time that people are reading the Old Testament, it's usually uh, first covenant believers. They're, they're under the first covenant. They read the Old Testament, but they're reading the Old Testament looking on how they can prove that we're still under the law. That's why they look in the Old Testament, because they search the scriptures hoping they find life. But Jesus told the scribes and the Pharisees, you search the scriptures hoping to find life. How, well, you say that to someone today, they're going to think you're committing blasphemy. Because look at what, he's, what Jesus is saying. You don't, you're, you, the way you're searching the scriptures, you don't find life that way. That's what he's saying. You search the scriptures looking for life. And then he said, but they can test of me. Why? He's life. So if you're not finding Jesus in the Old Testament, that means the way that you're searching is wrong, buddy, period. You can search the scripture all you want to try to prove somebody that you found life in a different area than Jesus, and it'll never happen. The black letters on the white page are needed, but they're needed to lead us to Christ. They're the, they're the breadcrumbs that lead us to Christ. They're not the breadcrumbs that teach you how to be a better person. That, that wasn't the purpose of it. Jesus is the author of of the entire entire Bible, and he put himself in there 100%. That's what the whole thing's about. It's about him. That's why he said that it can test of me. But you search the scriptures looking for life, meaning if you don't find me, then I don't know what you're claiming you found, but you ain't found it yet, whatever it is. But all that, because we're talking about emotions, is in your flesh, irrational emotions, and we have to learn how to harness them. You're not supposed to allow the, the firstborn part of you to take dominion over the second. You're not supposed to allow the thing that is dead in God's eyes. How in the world does that thing reign over the spirit, over you? How? By choice, that's how. If you're still sad, Having, you know, going into the area of depression, and it is because you are in your flesh. That is why. It's because for some reason, the feelings that you're claiming that you feel, they're coming from your flesh, and you don't know how to harness that. You think it's you. You think you're supposed to come into agreement with it. The truth is, you're not. You're not supposed to come in agreement with that. Jesus has already given us everything that we will ever need in our spirit. And our job is to figure out how to utilize that. And the Bible makes it very clear how. In James, it tells us, resist the devil and he will flee. So whose responsibility is that? If God says, hey, resist the devil, and he will flee from you, who's who's responsible for resisting? Us. Okay, so if God is all sovereign, like everybody is saying, and, I, and I'll say this, uh, you know, God is all sovereign if, if you use the right way of explaining it. Nobody tells God what to do. <laughs> That's how he's all sovereign. <laughs> no, nobody's going to tell him what to do, man. Chot, Period. Flesh, the end. The flesh, if you really think about it, it's supposed to burn. It's supposed to burn. Not We're not supposed mm -hmm. to try to um, bring it back to life. It's supposed to burn. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's and, and that's what we're talking about, right? What? So, yeah, it's supposed to die. Well, well it's already, be... according to the Bible, according to the Bible, it's already dead. Exactly. Okay, so, yeah. So if it's already dead, then how is it, how is it raining in your life? How are you more, and let me tell you something, you know, don't get it twisted. Everybody gets tempted to be depressed, upset. Everybody gets tempted. The temptation's there. You know, there's things that, that occurred in Iraq. I, I, it's, it's hard. 
not to to like let it go a hundred percent. It's hard. It's every day. You're being tempted every day. You know, but you have to overcome it every day. That doesn't mean that the temptation to 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 seeing those things or, or hearing the stuff, you know, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that the temptation's not there. No, everybody has some sort of trauma in their flesh. It's there, man. Okay, but in your spirit, God's telling us something else. And every day it's the soul is the is choosing to listen to what the flesh excuse me, what the flesh is saying or listen to what the spirit is saying. So uh, um but each one of us again, is, is tempted to have a pity party, you know, until you pick up the Bible and you read the fruits of the spirit, right? You read the fruits of the spirit and all of a sudden we see love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, you know, we see these fruits of the spirit and it's like, okay, well, where are the fruits of the spirit at? Obviously they're in your spirit. They're not in your flesh. So your flesh doesn't have love. Let me tell you something. If you think your flesh has love, you're mistaken. If you think your flesh has peace, if you think your flesh is patient, you're mistaken. Those things come from the spirit. They don't come from your flesh. What we do, our soul, we, that's who you are, your soul, you take the understanding of love, joy, peace, and you force the body to act it out. It's not it's not a uh, wishful thinking. It's not a uh, fake it till you make it. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's not. I hope you're not faking. <laughs> I hope you're not happens. faking it to make it. Faking it is saying you don't have the spirit of God living on the inside of you. But you're going to act like you do. No, no, no. No, no, no. We're born again. I'm talking about people who are saved. I'm talking about people who do have the Spirit of God living on the inside of them because you are the temple where God dwells. The people in the Old Testament were not the temple, they had a physical temple. But we are the temple. You are the temple where God lives. And I'm not talking about your flesh, your soul, your soul. So when I say, well, yeah, but it says your body is the temple. Yes. Yes, of course. So here we go again. Don't think that I'm saying that like your flesh doesn't exist. Clearly it does. We're talking about how it's not supposed to reign over the spirit supposed to be the other way around. Your spirit has to reign over the flesh. That's what I'm saying. The spirit has to reign. And the fruits of the spirit are in, are obviously in the spirit. And you tell your body what to do. You don't let your body tell the soul what to do. Try it on try on one, say one thing. Hey, yeah. That's where our strengthening comes from, correct, brother? That's where our strengthening comes from, is what I'm hearing as well. Okay, that's what I'm seeing when you're what, with what you're speaking. I'm hearing that that's where our strength comes from, um, to prepare us um, when when um, adversities come. Okay, hey, not beloved, to react to that. Hey, hey beloved, 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 you're breaking up real bad. Oh, okay, like, I'm you're sorry. cutting out so bad. No, you're cutting out so bad. I can't make out what you're saying. Like maybe you okay. just need to move around okay. in your house, or I don't know where you are, but it's pretty bad. I'll, I'll just let you continue trying. Okay. Do you need? I mean, you can say whatever you want. Just like move your phone around or something. I don't know what. Uh. I don't know. Jesse's been telling me I'm having a problem with. So. Yeah, it goes on her, and her her connection is really bad. It usually does that, unfortunately. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I've got yeah, to, so I've got to address. That. What I was okay. saying is the strength 
you can understand what I'm meaning. Um, the strengthening in our spirit um, that we need um, so that uh, when the adversaries come or the, 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 the tribulation in our lives, which are expected, that we have that spirit within us. Through, our soul is, like you said, ourselves. Our flesh is, is dead. So we have to control it with, with the change of mind, like Jesse was saying. And when we do that, that gives us the strengthening we need in Christ. Correct? Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, we're utilizing our spirit, which is the truth, right? We're utilizing our spirit, which is the truth, because the flesh is lying about what we're feeling. Correct. You know, when we are, li when we are living in our feelings, then you are in the belly of the whale of the big fish again, because you keep leaving Joppa. Your spirit is Joppa, beautiful, pleasant. That's what your spirit is. And when your soul chooses to be prideful, and, and, and it's a prideful act, you may not look at it that way, but basically when your soul chooses not to listen to the spirit and it listens to the flesh, it cries out for help again. It's in the belly, like right. Jonah, right? Yeah, so, I, I, was, I was explaining this to my husband when his truck broke down. He was so angry, and I said, it's okay. This too shall pass. That's what I say, because he got in his flesh. Yeah, so, you know, so, yeah, you know. so, so he, he's actually home today listening to you, and I'm so glad. Thank you, Tri. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, and then we read Fruits of the Spirit, Love, Joy, Peace, Long Suffering, and then people read that. And they're like, man, I don't feel none of that. <laughs> I don't feel you. You know, you're not going to feel uh, the love, joy, and patience that's in the spirit. Your flesh is not going to feel that. Your flesh has its own understanding on what love is. To a lot of people, love is just sex. <laughs> that's what love is, right? Love is love. Sex with whoever you want, that's love. No, that's Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what God's love is completely different, right? God's love is can only be called love when you use it at the right moment. That's what love is. When someone literally is ruining your life or ruining a moment that you're having, they're being very hateful. They're doing something that requires forgiveness. And you say to yourself, you may not say, I'm not going to forgive them. You're just going to say, oh, I'm mad and I'm going to give them the business and I'm going to tell them this. Well, then that's the perfect opportunity. Matter of fact, that's the only opportunity to use love <laughs> because love forgives. <clears throat> that's what love is. Love is not just only hanging out with people that like being around you and you like being around them and oh, we're just being loving. No, that's just people enjoy each other's company because they don't get under each other's skin. Love is when one of them people do something that causes you not to want to forgive them. You don't want to forgive them, but you forgive them anyway. That's love. That right there, that was love. The 10 years you hung out with them and everything was fine. That wasn't love. If everybody is enjoying everybody's company, what's love then? I'm trying to tell you, you actually could be friends with people because they're always in their belly and you're always in your belly. And I'm talking about the flesh. You know, there's people, they only hang out with people that like to be in their flesh. And you're telling me that love is in the flesh. The Bible makes it clear in the flesh. There is no good thing. But you're going to say, oh, man, but we get along. We've been getting along for 10 years. Y'all been in y'all's belly for 10 years. <laughs> That's what y'all been doing for 10 years. See, when you become a Christian, 100%, when you become a Christian, <laughs> you're automatically put with a group of people that you can't stand. <laughs> 100%. You know why? Because everybody's different. Everybody is sick and tired 
of being sick and tired. That's why we're all together because we're tired of it. Whatever it is, whatever it is, you were in your belly. You were swallowed, swallowed up by the big fish. It's not a coincidence that Nineveh, where Jonah was going, it's not a coincidence that their god was a was a fish, D Dagon, or Dagon, however you want to pronounce it. That's a coincidence. So Jonah did not want to go minister to the people in Nineveh because they worshipped they worshipped a fish god. And if you don't understand what the fish god is, it's it's actually the belly. Uh, when you go look at it, and it's uh, it's uh, the fish. It, you know, it's talking about wiggling and jiggling, and it, it's describing feelings. Okay, but, uh, because he did not want to go minister to those people, he became one of those people. <laughs> he became one of those people that worshipped the big fish, which is the belly. And when this belly swallowed him up, it's trying to show you how much in his belly, talking about his feelings, in his flesh, how much in his flesh. And when he realized that he, that, that he separated from God in that way, he called that place hell. If you don't understand, your flesh is hell, 100%. It is separated from God. When you can understand that part, spirit, soul, and body starts making more sense to you. And from there is where he cried out from God, from this place called hell that he called. He called it hell. And every one of us have called out to God from this great belly. We've all cried out to him. And he saved us. And now... We're together with people we just cannot stand. But because we're learning how to love, that's why we're righteous with God, because you'll know that they're my disciples if they know how to love one another, because there's nothing to love. Each one of us has mannerisms that we cannot stand. When I was younger, my little brother would eat bowls of cereal, and I, I'd have to tell him to stop smacking every 30 seconds. I, I couldn't be around him. It drove me nuts. Well, it's just like that when you become a Christian. You are not going to be able to stand how certain people are in their flesh. Tell uh, me about it. That means you need to learn how to, and that means you need to learn how to love. <laughs> it's you that's the problem, not the person. It's you. You are not used to loving people. You're just used 100%. to being around people you like. So when you're always putting yourself around people you like, well, what's there to love? You don't have to use love. And so if you don't have to use love and you live like that for 20, 30 years, and then you put yourself, you oh, watch this, you put your flesh around someone. Now watch this, you're not used to using love now. And then you put your flesh around someone that's quote unquote annoying. And instead of loving them, you're like, oh, I just can't stand being around him. You got a problem. <laughs> you, got, you got a problem, my friend. And you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to bring up, I'm going to bring up somebody that, uh, you know, you don't hear a whole lot of people talk about. And I understand why I sit back and I can see it a hundred percent. But I don't say nothing because, you know, the Bible makes it clear. You need to take out the pole out of your eye before you try to remove sawdust from someone else's. And that, and, and that's some strong words, but you got to do it. And uh, there's a guy on TikTok. His name is Burn It Down. Okay. And uh, I, I understand. I understand he says something that drives people nuts. I get it. But one thing I've learned is you can tell who don't know how to love because they run away from this guy 50,000 miles an hour, cursing them at the same time. And uh, I'm telling you, all of us, that, that the world has beat up, the belly has beat up, they come to the Lord because they needed the Lord, not because they were perfect. And so we all meet ourselves in this place 
and we're trying to figure out <laughs> who we can stand and who we can't stand. Look, I get it. All right. I get it. Um, but I, I'm sitting there telling you that you're going to be surprised who you're going to be living next to in heaven. I'm just using that as an example. Uh, you know, burn it down, maybe your neighbor. <laughs> so you might as well get to learn how to like them while you're here, man. Okay. Um, and I know a you know, lot of people probably don't even don't even like that I'm saying that, but I'm sitting there telling you I know what I see, and uh, whether he's saved or not, that's between him and God. But what I'm trying to tell you is, uh, everybody had a different life here, everyone did, and so of course there's going to be people that quote unquote that you say, well, uh, it's your flesh. I'm trying to tell you, it's your flesh that's the problem not the other people around you. Stop trying to change everybody around you, and you need to change yourself. That's why the Bible says, be not conformed to this world. Be you transformed. How? By the renewing renewing of your mind. mind. You need to renew your mind. Renew the way you think. But, uh, uh, Dre, I'm sorry, what were you saying? No, 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 I was just, I was just, uh, I was uh, doing a CJ there. I was just giving you some ad-libs. But, um, oh, what I was going to tell you, uh, you know, it's funny, and I know you experienced this, and anybody who has been in the military can experience, has experienced this. I guarantee it, bro. But there's always that one person in whatever unit you go to, uh, most specifically, especially like boot camp when you first get there, that you just cannot stand. And you may even fight with this yeah. dude, like literally fist fight this dude. And by the end of training, Y'all end up being like best friends. Like one of the dudes I could not. I mean, me, me and this dude fought like every day. Like literally fought. Not not uh argue like on TikTok. I'm talking about we was fighting, bro. <laughs> like we could not stand each other. By the end of like boot camp, bro, we was best friends. This dude's name's Crispin. I'll never forget. We was we was boys. But man, it, it takes you gotta like you gotta like lower your uh it's little things that annoy you, but at the end of the day, when you realize you're in the same boat, bro, you have no choice but to just forget about the stuff that's annoying and focus on what we're trying to make it past X, Y, and Z. And if we can see it that way, yeah. even in Christianity, like, yeah, there's some things people do in the flesh that may bother you, their beliefs or whatever. But if you realize that we're all in this together, that kind of stuff will start, you know, becoming smaller yeah. and smaller. Yeah. And, you know, uh, there's there's people in this world, you know, they, they've had the privilege to be um, uh, a little more educated in the in this world. And then you put them around someone who's not very educated and they can get irritated very badly, you know. Oh, yeah. And uh, and uh, again, don't think I'm pointing the finger. I don't know how many times I got to say this. We're all in this together. Right. So more than likely, a s- certain people that may get on your nerves. They may get on my nerves. <laughs> you know, this is not, you know, this is not rocket science, man. We all know what kind of people get on our nerves, man. Come on. We all know. And, and within a very short period of time, we could be like, oh, there goes another one. <laughs> but what I'm trying to tell you is it's your flesh <laughs> that is doing this. Your spirit's not telling you. I love it. With, uh, it's, it's the best, man. If you want to really see me eat a bowl of popcorn real fast, just put this, just put this kind of Christian in front of me. The Christian is like, oh, man, there's another one right there, you know, and they'll say, oh, no, man, when I met that person, my spirit said no, (laughs) no, (laughs) no, your spirit didn't say no, your flesh said, hey, get around, get away from this fool, I can't stand him, and you say, yes, a master, and you go, you go to the big fish again. You leave the presence of God again. The one thing that you're running away from the thing that literally you're, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You keep using the thing that is making you sick and tired because you still haven't learned that your God is your belly and you don't want to admit it. You listen to your flesh more than anything else. It's all about feelings. I feel like that person gets on my nerves. I'm just going to go over here. Well, okay, go worship your belly some more then because obviously you're not done. They try. It sounds right. like it sounds like you're revving up after in between each breath, like you rev up. You go. Ooh, ooh. I know, man. My, I know. I'm sorry, man. 
no, I know, bro. bro. See, <clears throat> hey, that's a good, that's a good example. I, I gotta that's step down. Example. I love you guys. I gotta go. Uh, God bless. Right. I got have, the plumber here. Have a good one. God bless you too. Huh? Talk to you guys later. Can't, can't that uh, gosh. Oh, what happened? No, nah, I mean, but that's a good example, guy, right? Oh, but, well, that, but you know, that's a good example, right? <laughs> that was funny, bro. <laughs> He's like, man, I can't stand. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> re renew new your your my your my 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 my. Go ahead, try. What were you saying? <laughs> the, nah, y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead, man. Shoot, y'all good. Yeah, no. Y'all like get on my nerves. People, 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 people can't stand Trot Snipple, bro. People cannot stand Trot Snipple. They don't say the man. They oh, say I the know, man. man. Does, I'm sorry, man. I, they say the man does uh, coke. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah, dude, a dude came up here. I was talking about being a uh, drug interdiction officer, and a dude, he was like, oh, you must have had that good dough, bro. You be sniffling every 30 seconds. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, you know what happens, bro. Trot, that when you have allergies uh. as bad as you do, because I have allergies, you do that because, you know, you, your your nose becomes runny. But then it gets to the point it becomes habitual and literally becomes habitual. And you don't even realize that you're doing it because it's a constant. Oh, I realize it. Oh, I, I, no, trust I, me, during I, I realize it. season, I get really bad. And I'll just be just because it's just it's, you know, people, people that do have hay fever understand allergies, how bad it can get. It can get really bad sometimes. Yeah, no, I mean, anyway, uh, yeah, no, I know, man, just some days are just, man, some days are just worse than others, and trust me, I know, you know, just try, you know, it, I mean, it, it'd be better for you to hear it for two hours than be me for the whole day, man, because I'm, boy, I'm looking at the little pollen hey, chart right here, and flip, it's a flip, bit high, flip. man, it's just going to kick my butt. Flip, you trying to be sneaky, what? bro, but I caught you. I caught you, Flip. No, me and Flip got this little underlining uh, thing going on. I caught you, bro. You ain't slick, bro. <laughs> you ain't slick. <laughs> uh, what do you do? Um, uh, I, I, I'm basically trying to outgive him. That's what I'm trying to do. Oh. Me and Flip got this little thing going on. Like, I'll be on live somewhere, and it'll be like, boom, I'll get, like, a, a gift. And it's funny because I've been on different lives doing, like, um, whatever, on Muslim lives or whatever, and I'll be like, thanks, Flip. And then people will be like, man, I need a Flip in my life. Flip, you got good friends. So whenever I see Flip on live, yeah. I'll try to hit him. I'll hit him back. You know, try to hit him back with uh, – with uh, more gifts, so we always trying to outgive each other, like regularly. Like, oh man, I'm I got you, Flip. You can't outgive me, bro. Like, I'm gonna give you more. So that is, it's just like inside thing we've been doing for a while. See, he think he's slick. I'm gonna have to just make you even, bro. Anyways, um. So what's on the agenda for tomorrow, Trav? Do you do you have anything in particular? Uh, I tried to make your <clears throat> harness and emotions video, but man, I didn't have enough, like it was too short notice. I, nah, I, I bro. If you can, if I you could, can, but... nah, nah. If you can make it, you can make it. If you can't, you can't. I mean, it's no big, it's no big deal. Well, I mean, we might have to. Man, I I was hoping to finish uh, harnessing emotions, I'm, but I'm not done. Like, there's just so much more to go over. Um, you still got thirty minutes, bro. Well, I, I yeah, I, I, I know. <laughs> Adre, your I battery looks like dying. it's only got one percent left. One line. I don't know if you know that. That's not the battery, uh, y'all. Battery uh, it looks slow. Yeah, you have one that's bar. Not that's not the battery, um, Stephanie. That's the Wi-Fi. I was going to sing oh, emotions, hey. emotions. I <laughs> uh, tried. I went and checked out your YouTube, and I'm going to be watching all those. And I'm going to be sharing it with people. So when you update, it'll be great. Amen, amen. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's well, a good uh, question. Uh, 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 Jordan had a great yeah. question. What about when the scripture does tell us to separate from from 
from some people. Like I think even believers, because it says it says like bring a wit, like talk to them. If they don't listen, bring a witness. If they don't listen, bring them before the congregation. If they don't listen, then treat them like a tax collector. So how how do we how do we how does that uh play into this whole um you know? Yeah. Thing? So so let me ask you this: do, do you think Jesus separates himself from people? Jordan, does Jesus separate himself from people? This is your question. <laughs> I'm just a mediator. <laughs> No, he doesn't. He does not try. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right. When he says your father, you're of the father of the devil, he's not separating himself? Not because he was never united to them. Exactly. Either God knows you or he doesn't know you. Oh, okay, that's right. That's I agree right. with you. I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> look, the, the, the idea is not trying to figure out, like, okay, the idea is not focusing on. You're all all day. You're not supposed to focus. Okay, who do I separate from? Who do I separate from? That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about. I'm not saying don't use wisdom. Because remember, right now I'm still kind of focusing on the flesh. Right now, this moment. So if your flesh is constantly telling you to remove yourself from everybody that gets on your nerves, that's not from God, is what I'm saying. I'm talking about people who get on your nerves. You don't like, I'm talking about you don't like the way they are. We're not talking about sinners that are causing you to stumble. That's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about uh, how your flesh, it doesn't like something about someone, and you take that as God telling you to get away from them. <laughs> it is just you need to learn how to love. H hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah, go go blow your nose, try. Some some people would have to get away from their own kids. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. That's so why, weird. Why do you think? Why do you think marriages fall apart? It's the flesh, bro. Like certain things start getting on your nerves, and you allow that thing to fester in there. But you yep. shouldn't allow that to 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 mess with your marriage, bro. Like everybody's gonna have something that gets on your nerves, but. You can't allow that thing to uh, to uh, fester and to be your god. Like you have to learn how to like tell it to shut up. Like, bro, right. there, there, it's no difference. It's no difference. <clears throat> oh, my dog Taylor, Tay Tay, where you been at, Tay? What's up, at, Taylor? Oh, I've like, got class go four days a week, and most <laughs> of it starts at like ten a.m. <laughs> Eastern time. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ain't, I ain't heard your voice in a minute, bro. Yeah, it's been a while. I've been uh, we miss you. Nose, nose in the book. Nose yeah. in the book. I've missed being here in the morning. I can tell you that. What is Jesse showing us? What is that? Like I'm Jesse, that, that's, real, that's real. That's real nice, Jesse. Yeah. That's real nice. Look at the other one that goes <laughs> with it. This certificate is. Um, this is all valid. Hold on first. The curse is reversed. How cool is that? Taylor, what are you going to school for? Uh, I'm doing uh, invasive party attack. Ooh, somebody's hey, loud, bro. Rattling my head. Look at this one. Look at this one. Jesse. Whoa. I think Move they're certified. Whoa. Who's that? <laughs> and they're all certified. Jesse broke into her treasure box. Yeah, and these, are, and these are the ones that are in frames. The ones I don't. I, yeah, I, you know that yeah, treasure dude. box. That treasure box had like uh, it was in like one of them, one of them foot lockers, and the lock no, had like a, a cross with a crucifix one, on bro. it, and then it had the rosary. <laughs> over. No, I had this in my school apartment. Box. The Holy Grail. She pulled out the Holy Grail. No, I rented out my school apartment, so I didn't leave them in there because um. I'm not going to have somebody, yeah. God forbid, take off with them. Now, look at this one. This is the other one. This is the curse of the Bambino, right? And this is the certified, it's all certified. Ooh, you got is... curse stuff in your house? That's no, this off. is uh, right? with uh, Baby Roof when he was with Boston. And this is, um, this is a limited edition. And this is um, because uh, when he was sold, this is the contract when they sold him. 
and he got mad and that's he cursed Jesse, him. we can see your face in the reflection jesse we can see your can face you? in the reflection okay. look at her you got scared boy no. <laughs> and, and, this, and this is the and this one here is the reverse of the curse uh -huh. so i have the collection awesome some of this that's stuff. cool you should get that curse stuff out of your house no and oh <laughs> this one look at this one um this one's pretty cool no she this had to find the is, over it. don't worry this one is when <laughs> miami opening day in 1993 with the marlins and this is the ticket man was, i love uh, the marlins bro yeah i was there for all their games through both world series all the playoffs and all the games you had box seats we had we had a what do they call Man, those things? Big baller, mm -hmm. rich out there with J Lo. Okay, I see you. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there watching it. I'm sitting there watching it. Oh, no, black and white TV. Game, I was sitting there turning you know, the he channel, said, I putting love the top Miami. one on you and the bottom one. You know, when he was screaming, "I love Miami!" That was uh, what a game. All those games were amazing. Yeah, those were exciting. Oh, and look at those this one. Games. This one is. Um, you know who this is, right? This is also certified. That's Dan Marino and who else? Oh, there we go. Dan Marino. There go. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. They're all certified. He's I keep jerk, them nice. I had them in who my drew that? studio apart. No, this is a painting. This is an original painting. Oh. And it's certified and it's signed by him. Oh, yeah. Cool. Signed by him and signed by the painter. Yeah, this is beautiful. I had them all in my studio apartment, but um, what's his, when we, um, remember this guy, um, Cabrera, remember him? Yeah, of course. He's from my country. We were in the same yeah, city. Yeah, there and you go. Um, yeah. What happened was when I converted the studio, I turned it, I, I rented it. And I just didn't want to keep all these out there because they show trot too. the curse of the bambino. Oh yeah, hold on, let me show you that one. What so, the great oh, I bambino? Have, well, two. I have, I have the original. It's certified with his Look certificate that, when, when he, um, was sold when he they sold him. He got really pissed off. So what I have the this. Heck? So, mm. this is all certified with signatures and everything. And then when he Bro, reversed cool. the curse, then I got these guys. You know who these guys are, right? <laughs> when he reversed the curse, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know who these guys are, right? These are the oh, big yeah, big Bubba. Big. That's Mickey Mantle, then, Joe DiMaggio. Uh -uh, Mickey, yeah, I got them all. That's sort of really cool. Them. That's a wonderful and collection. And this uh, is the one when they reversed it, when Boston won the, play, the, the World Series. And see, this is a uh, certificate, yeah. And Jesse. So this is pretty cool. Uh, Dibs. Dibs, no, <laughs> no. We can't, we can't. These are already go, these, um, these are already in the, they're already in the trust fund for who, these are already divvied up by my two daughters. I mean, they're already taken. <laughs> they're already divvied up. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, guys. Jesse, Jesse. Taken. Gotta respect the Dibs, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse, Jesse already adopted okay, me, so you guys. Yeah. You guys got to get in line. <laughs> and look at this one. This one's pretty cool. Yeah, I know. This I know. Big, hey, Big's over there just salivating at the mouth, bro. He is so oh, in his yeah. belly right now. He's like, oh. look at this one. The rat pack. <laughs> Check out the rat pack. The rat pack. Oh. And this is an original from um, that casino that they used to be in. Look, Bill, hey, hey, Big Net trying to see if you got an uncle Ocean, that's This is the original up, Ocean Eleven, guys. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna make, hey, I'm gonna make like Indiana Jones and say that that needs to be in a museum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these are. Oh, that. Cool. Hey, Jess, Jess, that's the original Ocean Eleven. Yeah, this is the original Ocean Eleven, guys. This picture that I, oh, I showed cool. right here, both of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, yeah, Jesse got so all we, kinds we of had him. I had, I had, probably, a, uh, hey, we had a man. Hey, Jesse cave. probably has, Jesse probably has the Holy Grail in there somewhere. You've been looking for that. <laughs> thing. The attic or oh. have it. <laughs> that needs to be in a museum. But when we rented, yeah, when I rented the studio apartment, I just didn't feel comfortable leaving them in there. You know, I had them all up on the wall and everything. Maybe just she didn't has, feel comfortable. Uh, <clears throat> So I brought Jesse him back in the 
the foreskin of Jesus too. Did you guys hear about that? Some Catholics no, saying the, the foreskin, foreskin of Jesus. Jesus. I, we don't go that far. And it does miracles. <laughs> the foreskin oh, of Lord. Jesus. Can you believe that? <laughs> no, I don't go to that extreme. They, if I think if you read in some of those books, like Enoch or Jasper, they also talk about the skins. They talk about those skins. You know that, right? They were they were left the coats, the coats of skin. They call them the coats of skin, and they talk about how they were in they were in um, uh, they would use them. I don't know how. I don't read those books, but I read that portion of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Probably no more. No more they got about some it. Wild dude. stuff going on on that side. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit more on harnessing emotions. I know uh, there's obviously some people in here that's kind of uh, okay. Kind of went through uh, uh, harnessing emotions uh, with us before, but I can tell in some of the comments that there's some people that hadn't. Um, <clears throat> so we're probably gonna have to talk about this a little bit tomorrow. But I'll try to do what I can to, to finish this up. So we'll jump to, uh, um, and I'll say this, when people are very familiar with who they are in the spirit, not just the head knowledge, but they, they're just, they just know like who they are. Uh, they don't, you know, you don't, they, they don't get in their belly, um, as quickly as, as they used to, which is good. Now it doesn't mean that you won't be tempted right? To initially like maybe spaz out on somebody, <laughs> but there'd be a difference, right? It's kind of like, you know, you're getting ready to spaz out and you might, you might, you might just say something like, you know what? And the other person's like, what? And you're like, ah, never mind. <laughs> so, you know, it, at times, you know, you can catch yourself, uh, you know, go into your belly and you just kind of, you know, you just kind of bring yourself back, but it's not in the sense of obedience, right? You're not doing it because God said, you better, you better not act like that. That's not why you're not being that way. You're not being that way because you personally, you're just tired of it. That's why I say all the time that when you start knowing who you are in the spirit, because you're not the flesh, you're the soul that has a righteous spirit because of what Christ did. So when you learn to separate the idea that you're not the flesh, that part is dead. When you understand that 100%, you'll be better by accident than you ever were trying. Than you ever were trying to be good on purpose, you'll be better on accident when you understand this. It's actually the quite opposite. You're not being better because you're trying so hard. No, no. That's someone who's under the first covenant. They put themselves under the first covenant. They're under the law only. And you got to understand the law, Moses' law was given. It was a physical law given to physical people to tell their physical flesh to behave. If you don't understand that, if you don't understand what that means, you got to understand these people in the Old Testament did not have a born again spirit. They had a dead spirit and they had a flesh. And because they had a dead spirit, the spirit could not speak to the soul. This is actually not hard, man. It's really not. God could not speak to the person's soul using their spirit because their spirit was dead. So in the Old Testament, you see all these depictions <laughs> because God is trying to talk to the soul using the flesh. It's not an easy task. <laughs> if you can't tell, if you can't tell, it's not an easy task, man. I mean, God physically did miracles, which, you know, people foolishly today believe that those miracles were amazing. And in comparison, they don't even come close to who you are in your spirit. But because people in their belly, in their flesh, their feelings tell them, oh, I wish I could have saw the waters parted with Moses. But yet Jesus tells us that the people in the Old Testament wish that they could see and hear 
what we see and hear. And we go, what is that? I don't see nothing. <laughs> it's because you're in your belly, man. Because you think that you are your flesh and you're trying to see God using your flesh when he gave you a spirit and you're supposed to be descaled so you could spiritually see and hear him. That's what people in the Old Testament couldn't do. And now we can, and you're still worshiping what the people in the Old Testament did. You know why? Because you're, you're in your flesh. You're still thinking with your fleshly eyes and your fleshly mind. You, you want to hear God. You know, people say, I heard God with an audible voice. Oh, that's pretty bad, bro, to be honest with you. <laughs> that's, that's pretty bad, man. You heard him with your auto, so so you're so far away from God that God had to, he had to come to you like people in the Old Testament who didn't have a, a resurrected spirit. I, I don't think you realize what you're. Let me tell you something. It's not bragging. You're just showing how far away you are, and God didn't hand pick you because you're special. I heard him. He said, "I heard him." Listen, listen, Linda, listen. God will speak to us the way that he has to speak to us. I get that 100%. But Christ made a way where he speaks to us in the spirit. Just like this world speaks to your soul using the flesh, it uses your body. The world uses your physical body and your soul can hear and see what the physical body is hearing and seeing. I'm sitting there telling you that the spirit that lives in us, your soul can see and hear what it can see and hear. You just have to get used to seeing and hearing that way. So uh, John 1, let me see, John 1, uh, 10, 11, 12, 12, I think it's 12. Uh, John 1, 12, he says that, that it, you know, he gave us power to become the sons of God. The power doesn't come through the flesh to be sons of God. The power comes through your spirit. But your flesh is the one questioning whether you're a son of God or not. Your flesh questions that. Your spirit's not questioning that. Your flesh is. That's your feelings. That's why we're talking about harnessing your emotions. Your emotions keeps trying to tell your soul that you're not a son of God. And they'll use any anything to point you away from believing that you are a son of God. But it starts with your emotions and your emotions is not supposed to tell your soul how to live. Remember emotions is a horse. You're the one riding the horse. You tell emotions what to do and where to go. Your emotions want to fall apart like a $2 suitcase you pull back on the rain ah, 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 and you make it come the other direction. You're not supposed to allow feelings to take you on a ride of your life. Because I tell you what, you let your feelings take you on a ride of your life. Boy, that thing will take you further than you want to go. Cost you more than you want to pay and keep you longer than you want to stay. You hear me? No joke. <laughs> You need to start controlling your feelings and telling your feelings what to do. And, and you can't tell your feelings what to do by using your feelings. <laughs> you can't cast out Satan with Satan. So you can't get more in your feelings when you realize you're in your feelings and say, feelings, you're going to stop feelings. That's not how you, that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. You say feelings sounds good. I'm, I'm, I'm used to hearing your song. I've heard your song so many times, but the Bible says to fear not. So flesh, feelings, I know that you are trying to tempt me to be in fear and to fall apart and be scared because that's where I'm used to going. But Jesus tells me to fear not, so I'm not going to fear. Jesus says that we're supposed to choose love, joy, and peace. So therefore, I'm going to be in peace. So you subject your flesh to be in peace, but you can't force it. You can't scream it to be in peace. You have to go live your life as though you are already in peace. 
you, at some point you have to start sowing peace in your heart. And you, it's too late. If a hard time has come, it's too late. You're going to have to wait for this hard time to pass. <laughs> but once the, once the, once the hard time has, that's when you need to start sowing seed of peace. Everybody always wants to wait till a hard time comes and then they want to pray away the hard time. It's better to live under uh, God's blessings. You live under his blessings, meaning already in peace, plant peace. Understand what peace is. Be in peace. That way when a hard time comes, you know how to use it. It's not, it's, it's not wise to plant peace in your life when you're in a hard time. We're supposed to be proactive. What? I won't scream shit out on it. Okay. Okay, anyway, uh so uh you know God's spirit is supernatural. We we know that. And he gives us supernatural power <clears throat> in the spirit. The the sad thing is most Christians don't use it. You see it, you see it all the time. People are Christians, a hard time comes and they and they lose it, man. Right? Um uh, you know, they go through life living just like the people who doesn't know the Lord. When a hard time comes to you and you're you're a Christian, you're not supposed to lose it like people who are not saved. It's your flesh, your belly that causes you to, to do these things. We're supposed to harness our emotions, take control of them, not allow them to take us wherever it wants to take us. You know, we're not supposed to be just as stressed out, just as fearful, uh, you know, just as depressed and discouraged as a perp who, person who doesn't even have Christ. You know, if you've truly been born again, you have the ability on the inside to, to live absolutely above and not beneath just like the Bible tells us, you know, in the world that we live in anyway. The Bible says that we're the head, not the tail, right? Uh, Deuteronomy 25, 6, 7, 8, somewhere right there. Uh, forgive me for not knowing it, but I know it's in Deuteronomy mid-20s. or. But that's what it tells us, that we're the head and 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 not the tail, you know, when people ask, you know, you know, how are you? You should be saying that that you're amazing. You know, if if you ask a believer how they're how they're doing, and, and they respond with, "Well, uh, okay," under the circumstances, you know, you should say, "Uh, well, 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 what are you doing under there?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know? I'm I'm okay under these circumstances. Well, what are you doing under there, man? Get out from under there. You know, Jesus made us overcomers. And 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 you know, he has <clears throat> given us the ability to harness our emotions. You know? I'm t I'm telling you, I, every day any human, me, you, anybody can be tempted your flesh can try to get you to remember <clears throat> something that happened before the peace of the Lord entered you, before you started understanding how to use the, the peace of the Lord, <clears throat> right? Before we started learning how to utilize that, everybody was taught how not to be in peace. And so because of that, the memory of that is there. You could be tempted every day to handle a situation uh, the same way that you used to. But someone is asking you how you're doing. 
<clears throat> don't get me wrong. I understand if you got a, a broken arm, okay? <laughs> if you got a broken arm, uh, I mean, come on. You know, I, I've I've never had a, a broken bone. Man, I've been, I've had all kinds of stuff happen to me, but I've never had a broken bone, which is, which is pretty wild. I've done some crazy stuff, man, you know, but, uh, I heard <laughs> that it's very painful to have a broken arm. I've heard it. I can tell you a lot of other things that are uh, painful that I've, that I've been through, but I, I can't tell you how painful uh, a broken bone is because I've never had one, you know, and I tell people all the time, I think I've broke about 10 bones. I'm just, you know, I don't feel it, <laughs> but you know, uh, I've heard that broken bones can be very painful, man. And, and if somebody came up to me with the with the with an arm that's just you know totally uh, you know deformed, I guess if you want to say that, and they're like, oh, "Dude, my arm," I'm not going to tell them. Hey, you know, harness your emotions. No, I got a broken arm, man. Let's let's go to the doctor, bro. Like it's okay, you know. So, but when someone's asking you how you're doing. You should 100% understand in your head that they're asking your soul, how are you doing? Well, golly, that's easy. I got the spirit of God living on the inside of me. I'm doing amazing. Now, if you make the mistake and separate, right? Separate yourself from the spirit of God, come into agreement with your flesh well, heck, that's going to be a total different conversation. And how are you doing? Oh, man, life is horrible. It's because you're in hell, man. <laughs> you're in hell. Separation from God is hell. Harness your emotions. Your flesh is the thing that's worried and scared. Your flesh, not your spirit. The spirit is living in your soul. Someone asks you, how are you doing? You need to start hearing different. Stop listening that they're talking to. I don't care what they're talking to. You should not care either. I don't care when they come up to me, how are you doing? I man, you are talking to my soul because the soul is the real me and I'm doing amazing. I even go further and say, man, if I was doing any better, you couldn't stand it. Like, no joke. That's how amazing I'm doing. Now, if someone says, how does your physical back feel? Oh, well, heck, if that's what you're asking, I actually do feel pain. <laughs> I do have a back injury. I do feel pain. But you have to understand there's a difference between having a broken arm, uh, a back injury. There's a difference between that and crying over spilled milk. Harnessing your emotions is not allowing your flesh to take you away from the truth of what the Spirit says. And the Spirit says we're not supposed to fear. That's what it says. Rejoice always, it tells us. Does that mean because my back hurts, I'm not rejoicing? Man, I could care less about that back. I'm rejoicing. I'm not living in fear. Does that mean I'm going to go uh, uh, bungee jumping? I'm not going to go bungee jumping. I'm not going to hang from my feet when I have a, a, some some pain in my lower back. Dude, it's going to make it up with that. Okay, but when someone asks me how I'm doing, I'm doing amazing. Hey, how's your lower back doing? Say, well, it's doing, it's doing okay right now. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, man. I just want the back pain to stop. Come on, man. Come on. You need to accept in your head. Your whole mind has to be renewed. Don't you understand? Be not conformed to this world. Be you transformed. How? How are you transformed? By the renewing of your mind. What are you renewing your mind to? You're renewing your mind to not believing that the flesh is the real you. But now the spirit is the real. The Bible says all things have become new. 
Well, you don't sound like all things become new. How you doing? <laughs> oh man, life is hard. Everybody's life is hard, man. Take your thumb out your mouth, grow up, tell yourself the truth. Am I saved or not? Yes. Okay. Well, you need to start acting like it. You need to start acting like you're saved. Stop acting like people in the world who are scared and fearful about every little thing. <clears throat> you know, you know, when I was talking about having a pity party, you know, and, and I, I bring it up all the time, you know, cause, cause I, I've been tempted to have a pity party. I don't care if it lasts 30 seconds. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand the point. You know, if you have a, a pity party for 30 seconds and someone else has one for a whole day, you're not better because you did it for 30 seconds only. <laughs> Both of them come from the same root from the flesh. So, <clears throat> you know, circumstances can be very horrible at times. You know, there's plenty of times that I could have had a pity party because of some very weird circumstances. Uh, but what we have to do, <clears throat> you know, is harness our emotions. Don't give in to them. You don't have to give in to them. They're, they're, they're bully. You don't have to give in to your emotions. You can tell them to shut up. Tell them to grow up because you're just sick and tired of it. I'm telling you, emotions really hurt, really hurt people, man. And again, I'm not talking about healthy emotions. If someone in your family passes away, oh my Lord, I mean, cry. It's a big deal, you know, uh, you know, but you find a, a flea on your dog, you know, it's not that serious, you know, just take the flea off or give us some medicine. I'm just saying like, there's, you know, it's, it's not a good thing. You know, you don't want fleas to be on your pet. I get that, but it's not something to just lose your mind over, you know, someone hey, drops a glass of milk. Yeah. Send it. So he, earlier, you know, you, you brought up someone's name, right? And so yeah. for me with this person, it's not like, oh my gosh, I can't stand this person. He's annoying. Like <laughs> it's not, it's not like I think bad of him in that way or any, anything like, honestly, I would say, as Benny said earlier in the comments, he, he knows a lot more about the scriptures than a lot of people do, but that it, then it's when, you know, the, the pendulum of the extreme goes on the other side. And we say, if people get dipped in water, they're actively sinning by doing that. <laughs> it's like, there's no correction received. And, you know, I just, I don't find those type of lives edifying. You know, it's like when people are, are getting in the flesh and yelling at each other, it's not edifying to stick around. So how would, how would that work? Because that would be, that'd be choosing wisdom rather than it's getting, it's not getting on my nerves, but it's choosing wisdom, right? Or am I missing Well, let's there? just, yeah, well, okay. Let's look at it a, a different way. Let's look at it a different way. Uh, let's just act like <clears throat> we're all in heaven. Let's just act like that for a second. We're all in heaven. Okay. We're all one body, right? One body, one spirit. Correct. Yep. Right. Okay. So when Jesus said, when he's talking about, oh, you gave me water, you gave me food. And they're like, what when did I give you water? When did I give you food? What did Jesus say? The answer was anybody, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, bro. That's when he said you fit. Fed the poor and you and you gave uh, to the widow. I'm sorry, I was far away from my phone. It's so when you fed the when you feed somebody else is when you're giving okay. him water and food. No, no, no. I'm talking about the scripture that that I'm talking about. When what what was the answer that Jesus gave? Says I never knew you. Sorry, oh, my that? lord. Who are you talking? Okay, so about? nobody's paying attention. When he said, okay. when he said, when you fed, it's about it's about for when you did the least of my people. Okay. 
It, it, can you hear me? Oh. You know where it's, uh, he so describes okay. in scripture? All right. All right. All right. All right. No, 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 no. Somebody pull it up. Somebody pull it up. We're not going to do this. I can't Everybody guessing right and just throwing stuff out there. Let's pull because I'm not giving the answer. That's the problem, guys. Let me tell you something. Just because you know the answer, first of all, nobody actually gave me the correct answer. Let me just make that very clear. But when someone's asking you something and y'all are going through the Bible, it's okay to lead someone to where the answer's at. But I'm telling you, you don't always just give people the answer, man. Go open the Bible, just look through it a little bit, make sure everybody knows exactly where you're at. Sometimes you do that and uh, you don't just get, you don't just always tell the answer. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm, there's a reason that you don't do that. But uh, who, who's looking it up? <laughs> Taylor's like, sorry, blew a tire, had to make a call. How dare you? How dare you blow a tire? You're not forgiven. How dare you? <laughs> Who found it or who's looking it up or what? Are y'all going to make me look it up? Is it a family? No, obviously. <laughs> Whatever you do to the least of these, you do. That's the one I was talking okay, yes, about. That's the one. On, that's the yeah. verse I was saying. Let's. Mm -hmm. I said, but let's read it. Let's read it. I'm saying. Sorry, let's read I can't it. read so, it. I'm in the midst of reorganizing. Oh, I'm not telling you to read it, Jess. Jess, I didn't say Jess read it. I'm talking about somebody. Somebody read, read it. it. So, uh. Read, read like maybe uh, three or four verses before uh, the answer, uh, CJ. Okay. Uh, 40, 25, 40. All right. Um, it says, let's see, three verses before it says, Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when... When saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or no, no, thirsty read, and read gave Jesus. thee drink? No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, CJ. Before that, read what Jesus said. Okay. Uh, read what he said then that led shall, them to ask that. Okay. And then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come. Be blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from me, or from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee, sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these of my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Oh, then okay, you have done unto me. and Yeah, yep. and then what did they say to him? <clears throat> then shall he say also unto them, oh, now he goes into the left side. You want me to keep going on that part? Yeah, hold on. Let me uh, let me address something real quick. Uh, fam, love. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. If you don't want anyone to answer, just say that. Say don't answer. Uh, well, fam, love. I'm glad you said that. Uh, I don't think you under. I don't think you under. I don't think you understand uh what goes on on the live. Uh, this is just how. We do things on D scale. This is definitely how I do it, no matter what group of people that I'm talking to. If I hear two or three different answers, then we're going to go look at it. So I understand you heard maybe one people or one person say the answer. The, the, when more than one people are given answers and they're not, and we're not all 
understanding either what's being asked or, and, and too many different answers are given. It's not about, I don't want someone to answer. I want to make sure we all understand in context what we're talking about here. And so obviously we didn't, so we're going to go to it. So uh, thank you for pointing, pointing that out so I can show you the purpose of, of why uh, we're going over it. It's not because somebody wasn't partially right. It's because it was so clear that not everybody understood what we were talking about. So if we go to it, then that part is taken care of. So you answered in the comments. Oh, well, my bad. Uh, I'm not telling y'all not to answer in the comments. Um, and if y'all don't know by now, um, I, I don't, I don't stare at my phone. That's my fault. I need to look at my phone more often. Um, uh, so, you know, that's, that's just always something that I, you know, Dre and some of the other people say that I, uh, start talking and I close my eyes, but I just, I don't know. I just, I'm just not looking at my phone, but anyway. Okay. So, uh, long story short, Jesus said, this is how you need to treat me. What does he say? The last part? How does he say um, it? Early I say unto you in as much, in as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. All right. So you have done it to me, what you've done to the least. And then, and then they answered him and said, what? Uh, they didn't answer after that. Then he starts addressing the left, the left side, the cursed. Well, there's a part where they said, where, when did we do this? Yeah. Yeah. That's they before should, that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, go to that because I just wanted to go over asking him when yeah. did we do it, like that yeah. part right there. Okay. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, "Lord, when when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave yeah. thee drink?" And yeah, and basically his answer is what? Basically, what was his answer? <laughs> Basically, uh, and as much as you've done it to the least, to the least. Right. So, so yeah. So, what's he saying? What's he saying though? Like in layman's terms, what's he what's he telling them? Um, Anybody? And if you're I in the mean, comments, I apologize. I'm not reading your answer. I apologize. What? He's saying, do what. <laughs> Show love, like Does anybody love know? People. Does anybody know what Jesus is saying? Does anybody? I'll, I'll read the comments. No, I'm reading the comments too. I don't. I'll, I, no, I'll nobody say Nobody knows. I, I, know. I said. I said anybody. Anybody. Okay. Well, I think what he, Jesus is meaning is um, the least of the children down here. Um, that uh, we we need to lift them up more than even ourselves, even when we see that. And it's really actually all through love is how we're supposed to do it, is what I believe he's trying to all get right, us to right. understand. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. So Freddie said, "Go and feed my sheep." Yeah. Hmm. So, <sighs> hey Jordan, why would you think I would bring that up? Go descale them, go teach them revelation. Well, uh, the reason why I would I would bring that up is because <clears throat> let's just say that the individual that, that I did name, let's just say that person is saved, right? So if it's true, right, that's that's up to every each individual uh, to believe that on their own. I, I don't have to give my opinion. That's irrelevant. What's what's relevant is each of us see someone who is saved. So if uh, this person is part of the body, part of the spirit, should they be loved and treated as part of the body or not? That's that's the question. Yes. Yeah, of course. Right. So how do you do? How do you do that? I think that's where um, I'm, I'm not connecting it because there's, there's yeah, no so, listening. To... So, because what? 
there's no listening to the correction or advice that's offered. What do you, okay. What do you, okay. All right. So maybe that's part, maybe I might be missing. What do you mean? There's no listening to correction. What do you mean? Like when wild things like, like that I mentioned earlier are said, right. Um, right. There's, there's a constantly talking over yelling and there's no listening to that correction. All right. So let's go back to, let's go back to a biblical principle, right? You can't speak into someone's life unless they allow you to. Mm -hmm. So if someone's yeah. not allowing you to speak in their life, we should be able to discern that they're not allowing you to. Right. So if someone's not allowing, if someone's not allowing you to, there could be so many reasons on why that is. Let's say that the person is stubborn or hard headed. That's the, that's the perfect time to love someone because that's when they deserve it, when they don't deserve it. Amen. So you love them anyway, right? You just love them anyway. So you don't try to correct them. You know, this idea that we're all going to come together and come against this Christian. Look, not everybody has everything perfect. Not that's. I, first of all, it boggles my mind, and I'm not even talking about the discussion that we're in right now, Jordan. I'm saying it, it, it drives me. It's just just drives me wild, man, that we as Christians, we come together and we're like, uh, let's go correct this person. <laughs> like, all right, uh, can, can we love them first? Can we do that first? Because the truth is most Christians don't come together to love someone first. They come together to correct them. We're supposed to come together to love someone first. Okay. Now, if you think maybe that they won't receive what you're saying, uh, now it's okay. Do I even know this person? Right? So when we're talking about correcting people, if you pay real close attention, the people that are being corrected in the Bible, these people know each other. I'm not going to go to someone that I don't, I don't really know and try to correct them. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to love them. That's what I'm going to do. Because the Bible says you'll know that they're my disciples because they know how to love one another. Love is not liking or uh, you feel okay when you're around them. Love is when you're loving someone that doesn't deserve it. That's what love is, when they don't deserve it. So if someone is making claims that might be radical and outrageous, let's just say that if the spirit is real, won't they come to a true understanding or revelation of what is real? Yes. Or, or, or will they always be lost in this? You know, let's just say they have 50 ideas and five of them are straight garbage. Like I'm just getting straight to the point. Let's say they got 50 ideas. God is awesome. All this other stuff. And then they say something that is like uh, completely like this. And so we hear that one thing or maybe two things. And we're like, oh, I must be in correction in the name of the Lord. I rebuke what you just said. No, no. Listen, listen, you love them because God loves them. That that's what you do. And so when you when you when you put yourself around the you know a person that you're trying to make yourself believe, well, they didn't receive correction. Okay, again, we we we're all in this together. This is not no individual thing. We love them because Christ loved us. So all of us were brought up differently, every one of us. And there are people that I know that while they like talk about God, dude, they cuss quite often. <laughs> and I, you know, and because of, you know, the type of career I had, it don't offend me at all. Not even a little bit. I don't get offended because I, I know where the stupidity comes from, bro. Like, <laughs> like I, I know where it comes from. It, you know, I get it. Okay. But there are people that don't understand not even the kind of career that I had. And they hear somebody cussing while they're preaching. They're like, oh, I mean, man, bro, 
They are going to run away. And you know what? They have a choice. They can. God's still going to love them, but he's just going to have to use someone else that can love this person because this person, this other person doesn't want to do it. And they can rationalize and intellectualize why they're not going to choose to love this person. But God is going to find someone to love them. So then the question is this, are we wrong for not loving them the way, because, because understand there are people that are, that are going to love an individual. There are people that are going to love. So, so the question is, are they wrong for loving the person or are we wrong for leaving? Which one is more true? We're wrong for leaving. So, Right, because if somebody knows how to love someone no matter what, then that means something's wrong with me because I don't know how to love someone no matter what. I don't know how to do it. And so the offense can come from many directions, you know. So that's what grace the is. The answer is not always. I think grace unconditional love. Yeah, and right, right. So there's always going to be somebody man that is kind of like too far in one direction and you can recognize it right you can recognize like man that's a little far you know but you know it, even though there may be some things that people say you know love never let me say this love is a great equalizer It'll never fail. And so even though the temptation is to 100, you know, like shun this person, love is a great equalizer. What is wrong with with, with uh, walking up to someone in the, in the type of situation that we're referring to? You know, we could even say hop in the live and say, hey, man, just seeing how you're doing. How, how's everything going? Oh, man, everything's great. And then And then before you know it, here comes the radicalism coming out the person's mouth. And you just, you, you don't have to agree. It's okay. It's okay to disagree, but the person deserves God's love from every angle in every direction. Even if it's from you, the person I'm deserves trying. that. Because... I have a question. I have a question. You can, drop, you can drop out at that point of any life you're in. You don't have to stay in there. But I have a question about that. The only time that um, I... It's not a separation because I still love them with unconditional love. Is um, when they when there's a condemnation to hell to people. People are being told you're going to hell. Period. Line. I don't agree with that because um, we aren't the judge of sins. God is. So that's the only thing that will cause me to be. I'm not that I won't love them or respect them as far as hello, how are you doing? I hope your day is going great. And things of that, uh, yeah, out of the respect of the love I have for people. But when I hear that type of talk, um, I, I, I do separate myself from that situation. Well, again, and, and you know, there's so many avenues of this. Let's say that uh, uh, someone is doing something that is like very personal, uh, like they're doing some things that like really hurt you personally. Um, like, let's just say that you're trying to stop cussing and, and, you know, and we'll, we can use TikTok and you get on live and this guy's talking about God and he's cussing left and right. If that's getting you to stumble and you need to take some time away from that person, that's fine. But that doesn't mean you don't go say hi to him. You know, be a friendly, be a friendly face, be a breath of fresh air to someone that is not used to getting that from everyone because you never know that they may DM you and it might just be you. And you know why? Only because you are kind. Kindness goes a long way. It's well, not always. What about, about if you were kind? Time. What about if you were kind and they, they are condemning you to hell? That's how, what they say to you. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, no, no, I, I understand. I'm not talking about what people do to you. Okay. I'm talking about how you, need to be the people. Okay? okay. So right now I'm talking about, I'm talking about when we are tempted to shun somebody. Okay. I'm not talking about the other side. We can, we can talk about the other side too. I'm just saying 
that we can never forget wh- where we were in position with God. Never forget where you were in with God. God literally said that we were his enemy when he loved us. That's what it that's what the Bible tells us that we were his enemy. So even if this person is acting like the enemy of from God, we're supposed to love them anyway. So it's not saying you're supposed to agree with what they're saying. It's saying that that if the love of God is in us, we'll love them anyway. So if you think that I'm saying, you know, go hang out with these people for two hours, that's not what I'm telling you. Right. I'm saying just be a friendly face, be a be a, uh, a a breath of fresh air to them. That when they do see you, they don't see correction, legalism. You know, they they don't see that. They just see love. That's all they see. That's the only option that you give them. And right. if they choose uh, not to recognize it, fine. Let that be on them. But don't be the one that chooses not to show them love. So you can say with words, no, no, I love them. I love them. Show it. Just show up. Say hi. Be kind. Because I'm telling you, love is a great equalizer. And you'll, you will you never know. This person may want to talk to you. They may want to open up and, and, and say something that they never you know said to anyone else. And and uh, at this point, you're be, you could become the person's friend and you can speak in their life. But before being someone's friend, it's hard to speak into people's lives. And it's not, you know, the idea, well, you know, they don't accept correction. I mean, golly, are we friends with these people? (laughs) You know, it's better to be someone's friend. You know, some people, uh, it's hard for them to let people in in their life, man. It's hard for them to, to, to be someone's friend. So, you know, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not telling you. Uh, uh, when I say make friends, I'm not saying go eat with them and go, you know, go dine with them. I'm not saying all that. I'm saying be friendly. That's all I'm saying. You can be friendly. You can disagree with what someone is saying, but you can be friendly to them. Right. And so we start getting into these letters where Paul is telling us, you know, to, to remove yourself, you know, remove yourself from these people and, Guys, these were physical churches, okay? Let me just say this. They were physical churches and and they you know when Paul says, "Hey, give it give that person to the world." I mean, that's pretty much what he says. Give them to the give them to the devil so maybe their soul can be saved. Okay? Uh I understand all that. I'm not ignorant to any of that. But I'm saying this, let's say that they uh told the person, "Hey, you can't come to church here anymore." You're That means when you see them in the supermarket, you turn your back. Is that, is that what that means? If you see him at the supermarket, you turn your head and don't say hi. You can't say hi. You know, so you don't stop being friendly. You don't tell them, you know what? I agree with everything you say in Jesus name. You don't tell them that either. If there's something that someone is saying that you disagree, fine. Nothing happens. <laughs> you disagree, you disagree. Who cares? You know, but you still treat them with with you still treat them with love. Yeah. Would that be, in other words, when Paul says, give them to the devil? I I think (laughs) when I read that, what I see is, hey, stop trying to preach to them and wash their feet because they don't want their feet washed. Just treat them like give them love. Be who you let your fruits shine, but don't try to drag them into your belief. That's how I interpret when Paul says that. So, well, and other, that is part. That is part of. That is part of it. Because and, other, and so, uh, like what you're saying. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So I'm still going to treat them with love and be kind to them if I see them somewhere. <clears throat> hey, how are you? How's the kids? How's everything? Good. That's great. You know, God bless and keep moving forward. I'm not going to sit there and and shove my beliefs down their throat because. I believe that's what Paul is trying to tell us. You know, you well, there's, could- a, there's a there's a few things that Paul that Paul is saying there, and because he says something kind of similar in some other letters, but uh, the the point is, uh, and if you remember that this person is kind of living a lifestyle that uh, I think we all would disagree with. Okay, um, so I'm not trying to use that that as an example of what we're talking about. I'm just kind of going over that. Um, 
I'm kind of going over that area because these are, these are the scriptures or letters uh, that somebody w- will bring up and say, well, you're supposed to give them to the world. Listen, listen, a lot of people on TikTok, we don't know them personally, okay? We don't know if they're having sexual relations with their stepmom, okay? <laughs> we don't know all these things. What you know, in, in one area, Paul is referring to a to some very specific physical things that were taking place in a church, okay? And he was he was correcting people that he knew. You have to understand these people respected, so correction was not coming from a stranger, okay? We got to be careful with this correcting everybody thing. We got to be real careful with that. Uh, God tells us first to make disciples. He tells us to feed his sheep is what he tells us, you know, and, um, but I don't think I, I don't understand what, you know, why these things happen. No, no, I understand. Um, um, but like I always say, uh, love is a great equalizer, man. And, uh, sometimes, um, there's certain people that that's what they need. They, they need that more than anything else. It doesn't mean they don't need correction. It just means they would rather a friend tell them. And sometimes a lot of people, they're not focused on being people's friend. And that's a big mistake that we all make. First off, I always say this, we're all in this together. One body, one spirit, all of us, right? And um, it, all of us would be better off if if we focused more on just being a, a kind face to someone rather than being kind of going with the flow with the with the with the bandwagon here, you know, everybody getting on a bandwagon and just leaving this person in the desert. First of all, you know, if, if there's a person that needs more help than someone else, then we're supposed to be that help, right? But help doesn't have to come in a form of correction. It doesn't have to. It could just be a form of you just being kind to the person. Uh, and, 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 uh, you know, you just start there. You don't, we don't have to focus on correcting people. We don't, we don't know very well, you know? So, uh, Unc, what's going on, man? Hey brother. Uh, I just have a short little quick testimony that goes along with what you're saying. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before I had a, we had a, a brother in Christ who didn't very much appreciate the things I was saying. So, and I guess he hadn't appreciate the things that I've been saying for quite some time. Um, so he openly rebuked me in front of everybody, which, you know, I'm one of those to take it right on the chin, praise God. So I was able to Mm -hmm. do some of the things you were saying is not to get upset, to look at the brother, to see beyond what they're doing. To love them even though and I was able to address the situation in love to let the brother know I loved him after he left pray for him things and just this morning he reached out and reconciled with me he apologized and now there is no offense there was never one and God is glorified because his love has shown through and now I'm reconciled with my brother and God gets the glory yeah you know, love, love never fails, you know, uh, lo- love never fails. I mean, I, I want to say about a month or, or two ago, uh, there was a guy um, that uh, he was an Islamic believer. And uh, or actually, there's two dates. So over a year ago, I met this guy and uh <clears throat> You know, we they wanted to talk about the Bible, uh, but they wanted to do it like kind of like from an Islamic standpoint. And I said, I tell you what, man, I I said, if you want to talk about the Bible or if you want me to talk about the Bible, then I'll talk about the Bible. But I'm not going to talk about the Bible from your standpoint. I'll talk about the Bible uh, just based on the Bible. And they're like, okay, fine. So I just so happened to talk about uh, Moses's rod. And I asked him that Moses uh, do miracles. And they're like, well, yeah. And they, they showed me all of them, right? Moses did this on this one. I said, well, the rod did. I said, if you pay real close attention, the rod did it. 
God said, take the rod and do this. Take the rod, the rod, the rod. It was the rod. The rod did it. And so I went through the Bible and I showed them that that was a shadow of Christ because Christ is the rod of God. Now, of course, they lose it, right? <laughs> They're like, so you so you worship a stick? <laughs> that became their their slogan. And within a minute or two of them saying that, one of them was like, well, you know what? Man, we're just going to call you stick man from here on out. And it was a, it was going on for a, it went on for about a year. No matter where I was, they'd come in, hey, stick man, what's going on? I'm like, what's up, man? I'd bring them up, you know, and they'd uh, mock and make fun. And I, I'd sit there and laugh because my, the idea is it's so clear that they're lost. They don't see. So what's the point of me being mean? For what reason? If we're supposed to love them, love people because God loves them, what's the purpose of being mean? Now, we all have our times uh, where we're going to be mean. We all have those times. But it's okay for love to take over sometimes, okay? It's okay, man. Let love take over sometimes, right? It, you don't always have – your flesh don't always have to win. And so uh, I just – I just love those guys no matter what. And a couple of months ago, one of those guys, and uh, he's one of those known guys that go around debating Christians. He comes on the live and he says, Hey man, do you remember me? And, and I'm like, man, I, I think so. But I haven't, you know, talked to that guy in several months. Uh, um, and he said, man, I want to apologize to you. And he, he told me, like, he's like, dude, I'm the guy that said this, said this, and I was rude to you, and blah, blah, blah. And he wanted to apologize. I said, well, you, I said Bubba, you were, you were forgiven the day that it happened. You don't have to you don't have to apologize. You don't owe me nothing. I said, already forgiven. I said, you're not forgiven because you just now asked me. You're already forgiven. And I was like, wait a minute. I said, are you one of the? Yeah, I'm a sick man. And he's like, yeah, bro. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, but I, I was a, a friendly face to him. I didn't come off as an offense and insult him. And, you know, and so, uh, you know, like I say, man, you know, love is a, is a great equalizer. Love never fails. And um, I think sometimes that, you know, the best of us can, can forget that at times. I mean, it just, it just happens. Uh, Joseph. So they were saying they worship Moses. Oh, well, it's been a long time, man. I, I don't remember all the details. I just, I just remember that for about a year, man, I was stick man to like a whole, like maybe 20 or 30 uh, Islamic believers. And I, and I'm sure they still remember. I just had not talked to them in a long time. Um, man, I didn't realize what time it was. Guys, it is 1030. We usually get off at 10. Is there anybody on the panel that has something to say? Uh, uh, Unc, Ryan, any of y'all guys, it don't matter. Jess, Zai, CJ, beloved. Re, 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 new, 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 your, 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 mine, mine, mine. Oh, my <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I, I'm just going to say God bless, bless this life and thank you for having me up. Yeah, anybody else got something to say before we bounce? Love covers a multitude of sins. Yes, very true. Good live today, Trot. Nice job. Nice job, buddy. Nice job. <laughs> oh, guy, with well, the live is great every day. Thank you Amen. for pointing this one out specifically. Yeah, uh, Well, Steph, you over there talking trash to me. See, yeah, you better get to cleaning that house. Before your wife, no, you need to come over here and clean it before she gets home. That's what you need to do. <laughs> uh, I forgot that um, you mentioned you have a cleaning lady. Something oh, dude, she's amazing, dude. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm not kidding, dude. Real soon. Hey, which, which one, Mike Garcia? Which one do you want me to redo again? What? <laughs> Mike Garcia. Oh. Uh, <laughs> He just wants me to. He, he asked me to do to something again, bro. Obviously, the ridiculous microphone thing you're doing, bro. Obviously. <laughs> hen, hen, re, re, ro, ro, red, red, guard, guard, gardener. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hey, if somebody hasn't seen that movie, bro, it's not. You have to know what he, what you're doing for because it's just that much more funny. But obviously, uh, you're sounding like a. Uh, 
uh, what do you call it? Um, They're at a baseball uh, game. It, yeah, well, it's the echo. It's the echo of the speaker, right, at a baseball game. <laughs> across yeah, the field. So, <laughs> across the field. So they'll say, and coming up, number seven, you know, Johnny Knoxville, but it, it'll come off, you know, and come, come, not num, num, number yeah. seven, seven. John, John, nee, 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 bro, knock, 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 Knoxville, yeah. Bill, Bill, Bill. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man. So, but, uh, well, all righty, guys. Your, today, what? What's your topic tomorrow, what? Trot? Okay, so. Take no topic tomorrow, but tomorrow will take care of itself. Oh, <laughs> Just Lord, see, I was asking it. Trot. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think we'll probably talk about uh, just a little bit more. Um, probably not a whole lot. I'm pretty much done. Uh, but we'll emotions, end emotions. harnessing emotions tomorrow. And uh, let me see. There was something, man, we were supposed to talk about after this. Uh, maybe yeah, one of y'all can remind to talk me tomorrow. About Jezebel but... spirit. No. Oh, there you go. Well, hold on. Where's <laughs> misunderstood at? Hold on. Did she, she, even, did she was it? Was she even she here today? today. Uh uh. So Oh man, you know yeah. what? So we're gonna talk about. So if she don't come in here tomorrow, then uh, we'll talk about it. We could probably talk about it tomorrow if she's if she's in here, and if she tells me, "Hey, we didn't get to talk about it," I'm gonna send her the YouTube link. Misunderstood. <laughs> if you have not subscribed to the YouTube li link at Descaled Live, you need to subscribe. Guys, anybody in here at Descaled Live? At Descaled Live. There you uh, go. Descaled ends with an E D. Not Descale, but Descaled. So at Descaled Live, which is right there in the comment. Uh, CJ put it in. Uh, if you have not subscribed, you need to subscribe and hit the little bell. Uh, that way, when uh, videos have been uploaded, you will get a chime, and you can see which one it is, and uh, you can probably send it to a friend. You never know. Uh, it's just emotions that's taking me over. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Tied up yeah, in so. sorrows. Oh my soul. soul! Here we go! Oh here we go! God. American Idol! American Idol over her! <laughs> you heard my that part? Lord. of lost in my soul. Hey, everybody, have a beautiful day. Take care. God bless. God bless everybody. We'll see God bless. We'll, we'll see y'all tomorrow, tomorrow morning. God bless. Have a good one. Would you be mine? Would you be mine?